Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing episode 96. And we're recording this quite late. We're all uh, rich, <laughs> rich energy up already to keep us away. And uh, we're delighted to be joined by my it's, we're sort of teammates. I know we're not in the same category, Boy, but boyfriend, boyfriend. teammates <laughs> with uh, Storm, Storm <laughs> Stacey. So hold on, let, let's go straight into it. Uh, hold on, well, let's go straight into a part two. First of all, I am so sorry, lads. I am so, so sorry that we're like running this late on the show. So I've just absolutely hammered. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. all right. We got we got a lovely meal. Like, oh, I was like, oh yeah. Oh god, honestly, absolutely hammered the Belgrave Transport, who's um actually we have uh, the same sponsor, yeah, don't we? we? Do, yeah. Same sponsor, and he sponsors the your team as well. I tell you what, he's the world's coming together. He's getting um, good he's with getting I am a corporate <laughs> sellout, mate. I am a full-on corporate sellout. So, uh, Adrian, Nick, there, they will be screaming at the YouTube. They're going, what have you done to the van? It is. I have burned some serious rubber all the way down here. I've loved it. I'm actually off. I'm. I was pumping, I was, I was, pumping I was, lads. Pumping. I was trying to sort of car with them, and then I, I, I didn't end up getting off. And I was like, nah, no, yeah, we're good. talking. Bear, bear in mind, Belgrave, Chrissy, it's um, right up your street. Land Rovers and like Lamborghinis and Maseratis. We're talking high end like product. Uh, it's amazing they even speak to me because <laughs> I'm really and then, low and down. And then the there's Dominic's Transit. <laughs> Damn, that's it. Do you know when I'm I kind of scrap lads? <laughs> just to get, uh, give the viewers and listeners a, an idea of what we're talking about. So like about three hours ago, Dom rang us and said, you're going to have to cancel it. Uh, I'm like, I'm up in air in Scotland. I was like, Storm's here. <laughs> so he absolutely oh floated for like three hours. And uh, Bear in mind, it took me three hours and 20 minutes I'm to away. get here. <laughs> I, I, see, that, that's the mad thing. Is I know at first, I thought you were a Sheffield lad. Yeah. Where are you from? Staffordshire, so Stafford. Well, not Stafford. Um, the closest place to say is Stoke on Trent, but I don't like to surround myself with Stoke on Trent because all you ever hear is Stoke on Trent's a shit hole. So yeah, I'm a Stafford lad. I'm a Stafford lad. Have you, have you always from. been from there as well? Like yeah, I've always always lived in Eckershall like my whole life. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's just a lovely little village. It's just out the way. It's it's a lovely place to live when you can get out of it. <laughs> Uh, growing up as a kid, it's like living in a bomb hole. Like you can't get out. It's mm -hmm. just well, um, for for those that uh, don't know, Storm races in the British Superbike Championship for GL Motorsport. And last year, you were the youngest person ever to compete in superbikes. Think, Young, youngest ever to keep compete in it, and youngest ever point scorer. Oh, right, and ticking off all the boxes here. Well, then there we go. Now, are, you, are you sorry? Sorry, are you still the youngest then? Uh, Is anyone like? Since Seven. then, nobody's. So I'm still the youngest in it. Yeah, still the youngest yeah, in it. I'm so obviously we go. not the youngest ever. Still now. No, but you're still the youngest yeah. competitor on yeah. the grid. There you go. I think the the record you must have taken was Harry Hartley. Yeah, he was. Um, he's the same age as me, I think. But when we were about seventeen, he stepped up with uh, Halsall. He went si similar route to you, stock six hundred straight up to superbikes, and did. Um, I think first round at Brands Hatch. I remember him. He was like battling with John Hopkins, and it seemed a bit surreal because at the time, you know, you go from stock six hundred and all your mates, and like you'd have been the same. Yeah, yeah. And then the next minute, you're on the same grid with. You you know the like Josh Brooks and uh, all the top guys. It's a bit bit mad, but obviously you'll know in this show we'll kind of uh, we'll go through. Go no, through. It's, it's one of them. Like you have to like bring yourself back to. I mean, you've raced in the super, super bike. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know how you dealt with it, but you just you just see him as another rider when you're riding with him. Mm -hmm. But then a Ducati comes past you and it's screaming. You're like, oh, that's Josh Brooks. <laughs> Now I've had, I've only met you a handful of times, and you're not thinking that. You're thinking if I just creep no. over and just I've got, make his I've line. Got, I've got to say that so people think you're like a night. Oh yeah. yeah, a nice lad. Yeah. But my God, you can ride a bike, man. I'm not like that's the only ass blowing smoke and situation I'm going through here. But my God, you can ride a bike. The first time I ever saw you, you were competing with your sister who rides motocross, doesn't she? Yeah, she does, she does enjoy it, yeah. Enduro. So, like, the first time I met you two, you were competing at the world biggest race, the Moped Mayhem. Oh, yeah, that's the biggest race ever. It, it really is, isn't it? It's 24-hour, like, world Le Mans. That's, like, that's nothing. TT, yeah. nothing. You know what I mean? We are talking the cream of the crop go to this Teesside Moped Mayhem. And you and your sister were absolutely annihilating every one of this. 
like CRF 150 thing and yeah, it was yeah. just like everyone just wanted to go home it was the moped mayhem no, it's funny like every <laughs> every year everyone's like oh are you actually going to do it on a moped now well tell them to change the rules then well no because there's that many because you compete was that the first time you've done it then moped no mayhem? no I've, I've done it uh, years and years ago but I haven't done it for like a long time and then I did it this year but um, because I was going to say the first time I did it which would have been about 10 years ago you were you were there then yeah. but I think you were racing out in Spain at the time you were yeah. racing like mini bikes in Spain, and you—that—that's the first time I'd actually seen you. Right. And um, speaking of the the one we've just done this year, your sister was there. I didn't even know you had a sister. And then uh, since then, I've um, well, don't be making any movements, like <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've been watching a. I've been chatting to your brother. He's giving us the green light. I think this is <laughs> no. I've... I've been uh, watching her. She's got a really good YouTube yeah, channel. She's, it's yeah, um, she's good L- Lola, Lola Stacy, isn't it? Lola. Yeah, Lola, Lola Stacy James. Yeah, that's the one. And uh, yeah, she's got a real good YouTube channel on uh, everything like sort of motorbikes, enduro. The ones, cars. the ones she does with me are really good. <laughs> <laughs> but she does some like, the diving and stuff, doesn't she? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's just um, she's very sort of articulate and just like she's no, very she, good on it's camera. It's funny, like I've asked her so many times, like, oh, just just scrap your YouTube off and just can you edit for me? <laughs> Like, can you do it for me? And she's like, no, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it myself. It, it looks mint. I'm enjoying it. She's like, you just learn how to do it. You learn how to do it. I've tried. It's so hard. She's really, really good at tattoos as well, isn't she? Yeah, she's a tattoo artist, yeah. Does she's she have her own shop? Or yeah, she... she's got her own shop, yeah. Wow, bloody she's hell. proper good. Fantastic, like, mate. I feel, I feel like I'm going to interview her next. Like, get, bring her up next time. We'll just get the whole the <laughs> I know, yeah, family got her in, yeah. There we go. Fantastic. So, um... Right, I think we should just go straight back to it. We know a little bit about your family life and like you've got a sister. So where did it all start for Storm Stacy then? Um Okay, well, I'm gonna jump straight in. I heard you were named after a car. Yeah. Is that right? Let's go That's from correct, there. Let, yeah. Let's go straight in there. Not only was I named after a car, my sisters were named after cars as well. So I've got one sister called uh, Alexa, but she was named Porsche originally, that was like the name she had given, but then I don't think her mum liked it and stuff like that. So it's like Alexa. Yes, but I... my dad was like Porsche, like to call her that <laughs> or somewhere like that. It must, um, can I just say it must be a nightmare being called Alexa. Every time you call the name, it would be ping. <laughs> <laughs> be like, grab us a cup of coffee. Sorry, I cannot make you a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's like, not you. Well, you've just lost your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, and then yeah, my sister Lola, she's named after the Lola, like um, I think they're like NASCARs, right? They got they they were known for like having like big like poles on the back with a spoiler on top. Fantastic! And she she's named after them. All um, our listeners will be on, on their phones on Wikipedia now. Going, yeah, like, what's, what's, what's going on? Take it off the table because every time you get a every time you get a Tinder notification, it vibrates. <laughs> <laughs> every time you Sorry. get a text, I'll, I'll turn my vibrator off. <laughs> He's uh, talking no. about the phone, you know that, right? There. <laughs> Sorry, so good. I went straight over your phone. <laughs> there we go. No, I know, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, she was named after that, and then I was named after the Lister Storm race car. And I actually went to a museum with my dad, and he, he, we were like walking around, I paid no attention. He went, you see that car there? You're named after that. I didn't even know what it looked like. And there's a picture of me, like, as a like, little lad, and I'm like next to this Lister Storm. I didn't know, didn't have a clue what car it was and that. And you never see them anywhere. But in my bedroom, I've got a tyre and rim in my bedroom off a Lister Storm car. That is cool. And that is like the car I'm named after. And I've always said, like, forget my own house. I'll just get a big uh, round piece of glass and then just put it on as a coffee table. That is Because that is, that's the car I'm named after. And what's, what's the Lord crack? Is that, is that just... My dad, of... when he raced cars, because my dad did touring cars. That's the, the racing connection yeah. here. Yeah, right. My dad used to do touring cars, uh, stock rods like oval racing and stuff like that. But he he got to British touring cars. He made it. He had a test drive with Nissan, or it might have been Toyota. I'm not sure. I think it might have been Nissan. Or some of It was <laughs> one both, of the two. Let, yeah. Let's be let, both very good names. So yeah, yeah it's still impressive. <laughs> he had a, a test drive and with a guy called Andy Reid, not the Andy Reid. At... Yeah, sorry, Arl. <laughs> A BSB, another Andy Reid. Yeah. And he's been on Top Gear, he's been on everything, this Andy Reid has. Right. My dad did the test with him. I, I'm, I'm, from what I remember and what my dad said, he, he did well, like showed him how to drive because he was a really good driver. Um, and the guy who was running it was like a knobhead, basically. <laughs> so my dad said, 
And uh, by the end of the day, my dad told him to like shove the drive up his ass. And my dad has always said to me, don't do whatever, like what I did. Like always keep your head grounded. Like just don't do what I did. Yeah. Just keep your head down. And I think my dad is, yeah, he's been a prime example of, yeah, just crack on and what, keep your head down. What's the bridge from cars to bikes then? Yeah. My dad sponsored John Ingram to do the TT. Oh, yeah, the Ram. Yeah. That wasn't that long ago, really. I'm trying... When... He was on a Fireblade. I've got that Fireblade now. Jeff turned it into a track bike for me. Wow. Full right. track bike, yeah. It's that, um, immaculate now. When that, was that? That, that was a documentary, that year, wasn't yeah, it? I was going to say that. Yeah, year, that they bikes, did a documentary, yeah. It's had um, like a couple of million views on YouTube, yeah. that documentary. And it's uh, Phil Crone that's on it, because Phil's in, in the team like as a like yeah. tyre boy or something. And, yeah. Uh, it's funny, but um, yeah, it's, it's... but yeah, I think he knew my dad already, and uh, my dad had sponsored him, like let him use a motorhome because my dad had one of the biggest motorhome companies in the UK, right? And right. and then he had a one of the biggest toy companies in the UK, so like importing toys from China and selling that through Christmas, he'd be flat out birthdays, oh, yeah. everything. He did well, um, and yeah, it was like it was booming. We we went riding, we enjoyed it and shit, and um, and yeah, he sponsored John Ingram to do the TT, um. Do you know what year? Sorry, it's really bugging me. What year that is? Well, after it YouTube, will... it's on YouTube. Like, we, like we're saying, it's on. It's really bugging us. <laughs> well, how old would you have been at the time? Then, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't. I wouldn't have been riding bikes. Reckon... Not even motocross. Not pit bikes. Nothing like I that. Must have been about. I'm going to say it was around 2008, 2009. Must have been. Oh, no, as a guess. 2012. Okay. Right, because the Fireblade's two thousand twelve. Why didn't I think that? There we are. It was a brand new bike that year. Why didn't I think that? So how old were you then? Then we're going through the numbers game here. This is well. Here's the math mathematician. mathematician. Go on then. Are you seventeen now? Seventeen now. Nine. Nine. Years. So hold on. So hold on. So, you... so when I was nine, I'd yeah. just started on tarmac doing mini motos. Right. In two thousand twelve. So yeah. even prior to that, no motocross, no. Yeah, I did enduro. Right. So when I was. I learned to ride when I was three, and I did <laughs> <laughs> learned to ride when I was three, and then I did. Um, I started racing motor, uh, enduro when I was five. Right. So um, I didn't know you could do enduro when you were five. Yeah, honest. yeah. I, and I won the the auto like junior championship at that, and yeah, I just I fell out of love with it. I just didn't really enjoy riding bikes. Yeah, like I just got fed up with so, it. So yeah, no, what, what like I felt like I was being like. Not forced to do it, but it was just something you did. Because that's that's really interesting. Because like we're saying, like your dad was like a factory racer in cars. You'd think you'd be bunged in a go kart straight he, off the he bat. Asked, he asked me if I wanted to do go kart and yeah. stuff, and I just wasn't really interested. I was always ragging cars around the field and stuff at our house. I've gonna say I've seen the videos amount. of you as like a pro, like a real small child yeah. ragging like like high power, you know, V eight round yeah, yeah. donuts and all. Well, kind. my dad. <laughs> Long story short, my wow. my dad went to prison for a few different things, and uh, and when he come out, he had a brand new Mercedes McLaren SLR on order for when he come out. So when he come out of prison, he had this SLR, and he was he was on it. Imagine his cellmates like that guy. What are you gonna do when you get out? See in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm driving off in, son. And, <laughs> Incredible. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's one of them. This watch I actually wear. Um, this was my dad's watch, and I remember right. him wearing this every day. And no other watch means this much to me. Like I lost it not long ago and it proper upset me. Yeah. But I wear it every day. I got it set to me size. I wear it every day and I love it. I feel like it's like my lucky charm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and uh, I feel like it's my lucky charm. Um, and when he was in prison, he was wearing the watch. And someone came up to him and said, like, can I have, like, give me a watch? <laughs> and my dad being my dad, like, he's always told me, like, don't set, like, stand down to anyone like stand Aye. your ground and um and he was like no like why why should i give you my watch he says well you're gonna give me my watch <laughs> your watch next thing they're in woodwork with the metal to steel toe cap boots they kicked my dad to the floor and they kicked all his teeth out but they still didn't get his watch He's, oh that's he, not a he, joke if you knew my dad he had he had all fake teeth around the front and all on the bottom never and he could just take them out yeah from prison yeah yeah Jesus, what? They, they just booted him straight in the mouth. 
just smashed, smashed all his teeth a bit. No, I, I, I never, um, I never met, never met your father. Like I saw, I saw him at the tracks, and he, he I tell you what, right, from from a, a country mile off, you just looked at him, and went, I want to go for a pint with him. Yeah, because you'd get stories like that straight off the bat. You just oh, think right. that he, that he lad's tell, a character. He could tell stories all day, my dad. Though. I, I bet. Absolutely. Like I wish, I wish he could be here to yeah. like just tell the stories. <laughs> like we'd sit he just there. put his teeth on the yeah. table. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, you'd be out. And he'd pull his teeth out a little bit so they'd just be outside of his lips and he'd go behind people and he'd go, Aww. he'd go, <laughs> like that behind people. And people would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God, that's yeah, brilliant. It's just, it's just little things like that that it's just funny. But yeah, yeah, he got me into racing. I did the Enduro. Uh, John started doing the TT. Then I started doing mini motos. I thought, yeah, I want to have a go at that. I went at him with an iPad and said, can I have a go at this? And he was like, just me being me, like, oh, can I, could I have a go at this? Could I do this? Could I do that? Being a normal nine-year-old, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? What's a vagina look like? What do I do? What do I do? You know what I mean? Like, I'm ra- still asking that question, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, just <laughs> random shit that a nine-year-old does. Like, it's just the norm. They just want to have a go at everything, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So I've gone at him with this iPad saying, can I have a go at this? He's gone, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, yeah, can do. Nothing happened. What was on the iPad? Mini motor racing. Just a mini motor, mini, right mini motor racing. A video of mini motor racing. That's class. And I said, like, can I have a go at it? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we'll go whatever. Yeah, we can have a look at it. Nothing happened. I was like, I'm going at him again. I've gone at him again with this iPad. And uh, and I've said, can I can I have a go at this? Like, can we do it? Bearing in mind, he'd sponsored John to do the TT. And I was like, I'm going to the racing. I didn't watch the racing. It's only like... I'd say at least three years ago, I only started watching racing, you know, like MotoGP and stuff. Hmm. I wasn't really interested in watching it because I was always like, if I go and watch it, I want to ride. Aye. So why why would I put myself through that torture? Yeah, but you probably just watch it now to learn from it rather than... Yeah, I do watch it now, like now and again. But even you said you don't watch the MotoGP that much. No, not this year. Yeah, it's like... And he's a reporter on the news. And that's that's a bit... Me. You should be. <laughs> no, you're just busy. That's, and you're, that's you're yeah. prioritising, like, for well, me. It's like, for me, I prioritise you know, with, over... with working... Five days a week. Oh. Five? Lazy fucker, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Seven days in a week, son. You was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd gone at him again with this second time with the iPad. And uh, and yeah, nothing happened again. Yeah. And I was like, what the... Like, I just want to have a go at this. Third time. Went at him. Dad, I want to go at this. I want to do this. I want to see what it's all about. All right, all right, leave it with me. Well, well, I left it with you the last two times. But yeah, go on then. Yeah, let's do it. Come on. He spoke to a few people. Who who, who does it? There was a guy called Chris Spink, his name was, and he raced the mini motos and stuff. What a fantastic name. He did CB500s and everything. Right. Um, and I still speak to him now because... Really, at the end of the day, he started my career because he, he he let me have a go on his mini motor and I loved it, absolutely loved it. And um, and then yeah, my dad got me a bike, um, off Fraser Rogers' mum and dad, Sarah and Curly. Yeah, is it what Sarah and Curly? Sarah's his mum and Curly's his stepdad. Is it? Yeah, right. Oh, well, you're looking at us as if it's, uh, that's wrong. Do you... I don't know. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Well, his mum. His mum. I didn't know Curly was a name. No, yeah. His mum. Uh, Ian. He's called. But his mum. His mum uh, runs the mini moto. Um, yeah, yeah. Set up. Oh yeah, Ian. And so, yeah. like, you know, if you if you go and buy a, a, yeah. a mini moto yeah, now, we went. We went there. Yeah. You go to Halavington and Sarah shows you how to think. Yeah, it's funny that's because what we did. in it, traditionally um, in the paddock, ma- it's mainly dads sort of working on the bikes, and the the mums would be. Like very often doing like the hospitality, hospitality, the other <laughs> side of things. Where in that with that setup, it's actually she's, a reverse. She's the man. It will. Ian does all the. Um, Ian does more of the like organizing and the like desk work, and Sarah's very hand. It's funny when you see because you go, you'll see go, walk around the paddock, and Sarah will be like stripping bikes apart all and right, like, all with, right, like mate. yeah. <laughs> And She's like, got the Dremel out in a tab. Yeah, yeah. I'm just getting us to do the head All a bit. Right, you, want, you want some grinding down, do you? <laughs> That's it. I'm she, gets, woman. she gets stuck in on the tools. And, yeah, uh, she does. Our, do uh, Sarah's, Sarah's always been involved with like grassroots. I, when I started the Super Teens, I remember she was in the office getting everyone's leathers out, and she's uh, she's been a Go massive on, massive part of everyone that's yeah. went through the system, really, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah. And um, and yeah, I brought this bike and uh, went and had a go at it, and um, did my first ever season, and I won the first ever season I did with Fab Racing I, w- I went there at Landau I don't know if you ever went 
Yeah, yeah, I know Landau. Yeah, Landau, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Went there, had an orange bib on first session, did one session, and they went, well, you obviously don't need the orange bib. So took that off, uh, went round, won the race, and then won the whole championship. But there was some, like, calculation or something with it, and I ended up tying with Dan Jones. Uh, he does Moto2 now in uh, BSB, mm-hmm. and I tied with him. And, uh, and yeah... Uh, Ideally, I should have won it, and I, I, my bike got stripped that year and everything. That's one reason why I don't, I don't go and do fab racing anymore because it's like just so serious. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just want to go and ride your pit bike, don't you? And like you just want to have a laugh, but not threaten to get your pit bike stripped and stuff because that's just you've got to rebuild it. Nah, yeah, that's the thing. Because it, when I when I came through, there was only really fab, fab racing ran alongside the the British Mini Motor Championship, and um, but the the. A British mini bike thing wasn't really a series back then. Yeah. Now is it a case of you? Ra- is it like Thunder Sport and Bemsey where you've I... got British mini bikes as one paddock and fab racing as another? Is that how it works? Yeah, I think yeah. I I did the fab racing and uh, did that season. And we were like, well, there's nothing else to do. Like you have to do fab racing, and then NMRC started, which is British mini bikes now. Right. And uh, so that's split off from fab racing type of thing and set up by themselves. Yeah. Alan Lord runs the British uh, British Mini Bike Championship now. Right? Yeah, and uh, and yeah, we we started with NMRC and started doing that with Mini Motors back when they did Mini Motors. I don't think they even do them now. It, it, it's not really. It's Mini Motors hasn't really got that field anymore. It's definitely um, P8 in England with the Oval League, anyway. you know that little yeah. championship, and then obviously the pit bikes from Cy Motors, and well, then I've, you've got I've... the Bucci. Like it seems a lot more concentrated on, quite frankly, bigger, better products that all ages can get on. And it's definitely good. I tell you what, the pit bike scene is just going from strength to strength to do strength. They, do they still do the mini sidecars at uh, Fab? Fab? Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, I, cool, I, I only I discovered them. A co- a yeah. They look savage. Should we they do look, it? I would love to. <laughs> Honestly, they look mental. You know, at first, I, I saw one of them on uh, the old face tube there. I'm thinking, that's not real. <laughs> There's no way that's real. If anyone's listening that's got one, if you wouldn't yeah. mind like, getting in touch and uh, letting us like uh, absolutely booger, hammer booger the crap tra- out of it. Booger track date, like Teesside or something, and we'll definitely come yeah, down. No, no, no. I'll no. so t- tell you what, though. Whoever's going to do that's going to regret it later in the interview because this lad is absolutely savage on a pit bike. You, <laughs> you can fully like slide like there's a full I think Teesside Autodrome I've got it like their wallpaper it's you fully locked up drifting it into like I don't like the fastest corner whatever it is fully yeah, knee t- down Teesside seen some action from me my god like your actual bike control is just hell like how do you even do that on a pit bike every time I've attempted to slide a bike in on a pit bike it's been followed by a high side to be fair it's like rap, boom straight over the top so, because you really do keep your hand in on the pit bikes, you're constantly on the bike. Yeah, I try to ride the pit bikes as much as I can. Like they are, the good, they're really good. Um, when I was racing in Spain, because I did the pit bikes, I did the mini bikes, and then I did. I moved up to pit bikes with NMRC, and they like give me disp- dispensation, let me do it. Um, and I think the biggest thing in my career was just battling with blokes. Being on a pit bike as a kid, battling with blokes. That's the thing, isn't it? And my dad didn't care. Like, he cared, obviously. obviously yeah, cool. battling with safety. But yeah. he knew I could take the shit. Like, yeah. I could elbow blokes out the way. I'm not bothered. So is this... What age was this then? So nine, you're pestering with the iPad. I'll have been ten. You would have been ten. So I'll have been year, about so ten. Yeah. Mopping up, hopping on a on pit, a pit bike. bike. <laughs> this was on my, my dad's company's pit bike. Hawk Moto, it was called. Um, it was absolute bag of shit. It was so bad, <laughs> but it handled proper well. It handled like a road bike. Mint. It wasn't like a pit bike. It was like it was just a big heavy thing, and it was like it had this one forty motor in it. And yeah, I, I loved it, and I, I didn't win anything. I didn't do that, but I was battling all the time. I was battling with people, and I was having proper close battles with people, like close racing, changing directions all the time, proper fast overtaking people where you shouldn't be overtaking, hitting barriers. You you learn lessons from it. There's a few lads coming through now and the dads message me and they'd be like, oh, what do you think's the best thing to do for me kid? Like, what should I do? Yeah. And I tell them and they don't listen to me. Well, go on a pit bike. Yeah. That's I always simple. say, just get them on a pit bike because anything they ride after a pit bike 
is going to be fucking better than it, it's, it, it's factory, isn't it? Stable. I've, I've found this. Most people, when they ask you for advice, they're not really asking for advice. Yeah. They're just wanting re- con- to, they want you to confirm what they're going to do anyway. So they'll, um, in that case, they'll like they'll just, have an they'll have an idea of where they want to what they want to do next, and they kind of just want you to uh, confirm that. What's so, up? And then my legs are sticking. <laughs> <laughs> Can you so, not hear it? They might they keep going. <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't want to comment at that point, so there you go. But, um, so you went, went over to Spain on the pit bikes? Uh, yeah, I did. A, there's a thing called LEM, uh, where they do like sliding on KX65s. But that is like, that's like gym for Spanish riders. Like, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. That's why the competition in Spain is so much higher than England. Because you see car parks in, you think, oh, I'd love to ride on that. In Spain, they are riding on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. They've got their own quarters where they go every Thursday night or Wednesday night. They go and ride. They train. That is what they do. That is their homework. It's like that, uh, Lorenzo's dad's got one of Cartagena. And yeah. When you test there on, an, on a night, like yeah, car Cartagena, parks. Yeah, I've done it at Cartagena. Car, yeah. car parks and car parks of little kids come out after school. get the They can barely walk. Out, and they're, ba- they're basically, they're like crashing on per- They're like teaching yeah. them to like find the limit at like four, And they, they, five they got old. me to do that. I, I had a go at doing it. It was funny, I was there and I'm like doing it and I've got a big bottle of Coke that I'm drinking while I'm doing it and the actual trainer comes up to me, takes a bottle of Coke up, away from me and puts a bottle of water in my hands. That's the thing, even at that age, it's like condition training, isn't it? Yeah. Getting them on the diet, getting them everything like that. That's, that's... By the way, have you seen Cartier is in a bit of trouble at the moment? There's yeah. like big really? petitions on Facebook. I think it's looking like it's possibly going to be closing down there for... Someone said something about the they're having problems with the, the like their local council. But if I shared it on Facebook the other day and literally nobody comment, I said like <laughs> what's going on and nobody commented. But I've, I've, it's all in Spanish and uh, my Spanish because, isn't too good. I think that's because we need to be forced to a better track. But yeah, I, <laughs> it's so bumpy. I, you're not you're not a fan then of Cartagena. No, I like I love it. It's just I, it's it's a proper bumpy track. Isn't since it? since the resurfaced it, I'm not I'm not a fan to be honest. Yeah. I loved Cartagena. It was one of my favorite tracks. I haven't I haven't got very good memories there to be honest. Since the resurfaced it. It's not crashes or anything like that. I don't think I've ever crashed there, but 2018, no, 17, I just, I was moving from the standard class that I was in, youngest ever BSB winner, and... That is good. That that is good, isn't it? And then he's moving, had this conversation moving, a million times, hasn't he? Let me just squeeze right, on not, it. I'm not speaking to you. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I moved up to the open class, and uh, and I was six, gonna six race wins and <laughs> <laughs> two lap records. <laughs> you know how we do it. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I moved up to the open class, and I was going to ride for Gary Dawson in the open class. Oh yeah. And we that. went out testing in Spain at Cartagena. And he passed away on the way back from the track. Really? That's yeah. uh, Gary Dawson from Replicast. Replicast Racing, yeah. Right. Mm. Obviously, if people who know BSB, you genuinely know you generally know Gary. Yeah. Because he was always in the paddock. He was always someone that would help you out with anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think it was... I I just lost my dad a bit before that. And, uh, and then, yeah, we went testing in Spain and we were... My mum was like, are you sure Gary's okay? Like, this year's going to go ahead, isn't it? Like, not being horrible. Like, yeah. He's not going to pass away, is he? What you asked before? Oh, was yeah, he in bad health? because he wasn't very well. Right, got right, you. right. And we've gone to Spain testing and stuff, and he wasn't very well. He was in a wheelchair. He was like, he, he was loving it, though. He was so happy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Dennis Foggia? Can't say I've heard that. Mo- either. Moto3 rider. He rides for Rossi now. Okay. All right. VR46. I was beating him on Gary's Honda prototype and he was on Rossi's VR46 KTM. Yeah. And I was beating him. And all I could see was the biggest smile on Gary's face. Mm. It was just amazing. And so, sorry, was, was this... Um, so you'd finished the pit bikes? Yep. And was it was it around that time you, your dad passed away when you were still on the pit bikes? No, that was 2016. My dad so passed you, away. Have, had you done a year in the standard class first? I had done two two to three years in Spain right. doing Moto fours. We converted a converted a bike, like made it to be their regulations. We got an RS one two five, 
and put a CRF one fifty engine in it, and that made a Prima O four in Spain. Yeah. And um and yeah, I did that for a bit, but the bike wasn't very competitive. It was just so. What, what, so hold on, we've gone from T side banging around with elbows. What and your dad's like, a, like what what. I want to go to Spain, and it was a kid. How did that your whole life as go from as, that with a family? As, and as everything? soon as we saw the way they were training in Spain, it is like you need to be in Spain. Did yeah, you, did I you can move imagine. Out there? Do you know, no, do you know that's what I was just about to say. Do you know Gordex? Yeah, my dad nearly brought Gordex. Really? That's where uh, Graham Gowland ended his career. Oh, the circuit. Yeah. So I've never even actually heard of that. Like, yeah. and, they do the Red Bull rookie tryouts there. Right. I've now, heard, I'm I've heard why... it's quite dangerous there. I've never been, but I've heard it's quite it's, a sketchy track. It's, it's a very slippy track. Is it? It's not. It's not the grippiest of places. Like, but it's got everything. It's like such a, such a lads track. Yeah. Like if you were to buy a, tr- very, if, very very sexist. Is, <laughs> is what I could say if um, oh, what's it called now? Like if Budweiser. Had their own circuit, it'd be Gordex. <laughs> yeah, like it's got everything. It's got a little lodge in a cave. It's got a mansion over the back. It's got a runway. It's got, it's got a supermoto track built Gu- into the track. Guinness, isn't it? No, you're both wrong. It's Carlsberg. Carlsberg. Yeah, Carlsberg. <laughs> that's it. I was trying. To, I was trying to keep the conversation going. Chrissy is a professional here, and you know, just let yeah, yeah. let the flow of the story go. Dick. And you're like, you're just like, actually, Bellend. It's not Budweiser. It's Guinness. Hey. Oh, you're not I'm wrong. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, it was about to buy this circuit, like to the to yeah, the idea we, of moving over there we with you to get thinking about it. Yeah, like wow. just to move there. But it was like it's mega money, like mm. really big money. I, that goes without saying. So, yeah. how did that? So you spend how many years out there? Sorry, like racing, three three years, years I think. Yeah. So how did? But that... what what we were doing was we were taking a fifth wheel out there. So like you were saying earlier, the fifth wheel. We had a big one. You mm. could fit like six bikes in the back of it, and you could. It's like a house inside. Mm, yeah. It was like a house. So we take that over there. And uh, it was funny, like, my dad used to sit there doing 90 mile an hour with this big fifth wheel on. He I take to... it they're, they're supposed to do, like, 60, oh, 57, f- is it? 50. Is it? Yeah, what, 50 what was mile towing it? But by, by the way, and a, and a fifth I, wheel and is I an Isuzu artist. An Isuzu two-litre pickup. Shut Pardon me, shut up, man, really. Yeah, yeah. Fair play to him. So, like, what, like a fifth He's wheel for people there, that cruise, don't... cruise control, rolling a fag while steering with his knee, doing 90 mile an hour, rolling a flag, licking it, and, like... Mm, like In 90 mile an hour... Like, Bang! The tire blows out. We're cruising along at ninety mile now, and the tire blows out. I think he blew like quite a few tires out that that time. Jesus! Yeah. So how was that? so? But look, like we lived over there in that. I've got a video on my phone where he's like he's in the bathroom and he's got a, you know, a toilet roll thing like that goes on the floor. And you just keep slotting them on. Yeah, yeah. And they like build up. He's got one of them and he's using the bottom of that, squishing a load of clothes in the bath, like washing them out. <laughs> and I'm going, "What are you doing, Dad?" He goes. Doing a bit of dolly. <laughs> that's how we were living in Spain. My God, what we were just school at this point. Oh, I'd left school. Well, so your dad dragged you out of school. Yeah, that would, I that's was at school, but we were getting threatened to get fines, everything. But if I'd three play, years, but if if I'd have played football, it'd have been a different story. If I'd oh. played football, I'd have had a, I'd been able to have as much time off as I wanted. So, you, like three years, was it just you and your dad for three? That is, how how mate. old were you when you left school? Officially left school, I was 13. After my dad passed away, because I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I just... Trying to be somewhere you didn't want to be, just... And you're not happy, it's like, you just... I just... My mum was like, let's just take you out. Because I was racing that much as well. Yeah. I keep hearing my stomach through this thing. (laughs) (laughs) The mega sense... To be fair, I do edit them, so you probably won't be able to hear it, so don't worry about it. Um... But yeah, we were like racing all the time and my mum was like, yeah, we'll just take you out of school, like homeschooling. I never once did any bit of homeschooling, but <laughs> I just, I don't think it was a good thing, but I don't think it did me bad. I think it got me more on the path of life, if you know what I mean. Oh, I bet you learn more. Wait, I'm not, that's a lot the thing. more. You, you, you learn a lot more in three years. You can't say much because the teachers are <laughs> No, no, but, no, but it's, uh, for, for me, that like, you know, they, oh, I'm, I'm not the, like, school's obviously very important, but it's yeah. it's one, it's a system, isn't it? But my, well, if like, anyone I, can I, have that I, opportunity to have three years with their dad in Spain racing bikes, you would, you would like, you can learn later on. Don't about, get me wrong, I wasn't out there continuously for three years. We right. were coming back and back stuff and like that. But we do like a few months over there. Wow! Like riding supermotos with Brad Binder and stuff like that. Like as a eleven-year-old, 
on a 450 CRF riding right. with Brad Binder mm-hmm. at 11 years old. And obviously you, wow. you look and look and back and with what happened. I, I, I think what... I think that's like the reason why I don't ever get arm pump because my dad had me on big bikes as so a kid. Straight off the straight off the bat. And obviously you would you would never have known what was going to happen with your dad, but looking back, I guess it's um you know some people get to get to like 50, 60 and they've never spent any quality time with the parents. They've spent the whole youth wanting to be away from the parents. Well, then they get a wife's that's, that's the one thing I've always said since you passed away. It's like I did more with my dad as a kid than most people ever will with in their, their life. lives. Mm. Like I went we went to America three times, flat tracking, doing flat track. I did as in you racing. Yeah, I did mm. flat track nationals, and I finished fourth. Like, and that's America. Like mm. that is their thing. Incredible. And I finished fourth, and I, I'll have been younger than thirteen. So like, wow. And I was racing against like seventeen-year-olds. Mm. So what? Like, you know, what's interesting is like, your dad like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go mini bike race, and oh, we're going to Spain. You know, so like. It, at what point did he did he did he say to you just like this? You're going places. No, no, that's. I was that's just a about. I was just. That. I was just about to say, like while I was flat checking in America and stuff, I think I did so well because I never got like praised. Like it was always like he expected me to do it. Yeah. Like you were on it because you should be. Like you you fast. Yes. Um. Don't get me wrong, you'd be like, well done, like, oh, mint God, weekend, yeah. like, you were you were on it this weekend, like, mint, like, good to see you happy, like, enjoying it and stuff, because you have a shit weekend, you're like, you're down, you don't want to do it, you're like, I can't be honest. Yeah. But then when you do have a good weekend, it's like, yeah, mint. But I think 2016, towards the end of that season with the standard Moto3, I wasn't getting very good results, and I'm not, like, we weren't getting very good results, it wasn't going very well, my dad... My dad didn't come to a few rounds at the end of the season. Like, right. and you can already tell from the story, my dad came to everything. Yes, I. And it was just, it all went a bit sour. Like, he wait, he waited till the end of the season. And, uh, and yeah, well, I may as well tell the story. Like, I I was, we'd done the f- season finished and uh, we were, like, chilling through the winter season and I'd, like, be going to school, be, like, seeing a bit, Dad, like, seeing a bit, love you, like, give me a kiss, like, I'll, I'll see you later when I yeah. get back. Yeah. And I would sit for hours just speaking to my dad, just about random shit, oh, yeah. like just like your dad. You yeah. just speak to him. If someone was up, you'd speak to your dad. Yeah. And that's what I did. I used to just sit and speak to him for hours. And uh, and yeah, this one day, me and my mum went shopping, and uh, and I said like, see you in a bit, dad. I'm like, see ya. And he went, mm-hmm. see you in a bit. Like it was just a bit blunt, and uh, he was like, see you in a bit. And then we like went away and he, my mum went, oh, do you want anything? He went, yeah, can you get us a pair of slippers? Like, can you get can you get us a pair of new slippers? Because he's worn his old ones out. And we'd like gone away to go and get these slippers and I'd been out and then uh, we'd come back home and we were like, oh, where is he? Like, where's where's he gone? Um, my mum, because I lived on a farm with 2.6 acres. Right. So we had motocross tracks and stuff. A lot of space, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my dad wouldn't go out with like his his fags phone keys. That was it. Fags phone keys in that order. A man of a yeah, system. He yeah. wouldn't. He wouldn't go out without them. And they were all on the side. So it was like fucking hell. So he's not in there. He's not in the sofa. He's not in the living room. Went to his bedroom. Quilts had been ruffled up. He'd been in bed. Um, my mum went for a walk around the field to see if he'd like tripped over something because he had a heart condition. Um, and I was literally at the physio, the thing on Friday, the fitness test. I said, uh, the the physio guy said, have you you have have you got any heart conditions? Mm-hmm. And I went, not that I know to. Um, and he said, have you family? And I said, yeah. Well, my dad has, my dad did, and his dad did as well. The same thing. Right. So it's not looking good for me, like, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, wait, see, no, I yeah. seem to be all right. Yeah, yeah, like, wait, you're you're a British little bike rider. Yeah. you're going strong, mate. You're going yeah. good. You're going good. Well, my dad was in touring cars, <laughs> ah, but he sat down. He yeah. Did it. <laughs> um, and yeah, my mum went for a walk around the field, like to see if he'd like got out of breath or like just felt falling over and something yeah. like that. Looked in one of the sheds; he wasn't in there, and then uh, looked in one of the top sheds, and. Uh, 
and he he hung himself off one of the beams in the in the shed, yeah. And he just you just don't you didn't expect it. Like why why did he do it? He'd never left a note, nothing. Just no reason at all as to why he'd done it. But he suffered with bipolar quite bad and so do I. Like I mean, I know we all get depressed, we have like deep times where we like we're not very happy and stuff. Um, but I, I suffer with it and I don't really do a lot about it. I haven't been to see a doctor or anything like that um, because I don't feel I need to because I can always bring myself up. I can always make myself happy because yeah. tomorrow's another day. Um, and yeah, I I was in the house at this point and I heard my mum screaming and I was like, fucking hell, like, best go and check, see what like what's up. And I've, like gone out, she's on the phone to the police, like screaming, like, can you get like an ambulance here? Like, get here now, like screaming. Um, and I'm like, where is he? I'm 13. I ain't got a clue what's going on. And she's like, he's in there. And I've like gone to like look in there, like to, like well, why is he in there? Like what's he doing? Like is he being silly? Like what's he doing? And she's like grabbed my arm, and she's like holding me back. Like don't go in there, don't go in there. I'm thinking like maybe he's just fallen over in there or something. Like he's at worst he's died. He's fallen over. He's hurt himself. And she's on the phone to the ambulance. That's what I thought. And she's like pulling me back, pulling me back, and um. She looked like slipped grip. She like slipped like in her hand, and I managed to like get free. And she's like on the phone. And she's like chasing after me, and she like stopped trying to get me once I got to a certain point. And I've like looked round the corner, and Fuck he was just me. there. It's like it was just he was just looking at me. It's horrible. Like I don't. Fuck me! I'm so sorry, dear. Like... I can like I can see it, but. It's just, it is what it is, you know what I mean? It's it's life. Mm. Were you 13 at the I time? I was 13, yeah. Mate. No, but when, every, every single person's got, like, things are happening in everyone's life, but for somebody to go through that right. at that age, it's like, it's, um yeah, you can't eat, like, without going through it yourself, just, you just can't even comprehend. Just being 13, going out with your mates and and... Your dad's just killed himself, and there's Jesus no, mate. there's no reason as to why he's done it. Why, why has he done it? Mm. Like I've stopped asking myself now, like why has he done it? Because it's, I've always said with suicide, there's only one end. It's horrible to say, but if someone wants to do it, there's only one end. If they want to do it, they're gonna they do, do it. it. Um, and he was gonna do it, and I look at it like this way. I don't think it's a very good way to look at it, but. He had this heart condition, and I'm, I think the doctor said he had about five years to live already. Right. Because he went to London all the time having heart checks and stuff like that, and I'm pretty sure he needed a heart transplant to to like survive. Um, and he would have been on gas and air. I don't think he should have even been driving, uh, but he was like taking me to the racing and stuff like that, and uh, and yeah, that I Is kind it, I can't. Have you only Learn about what did you were you aware of that at 13 with the not gosh, really no just, it was this no, is after the fact yeah, yeah. god love you mate and um i kind of look at it like say if he didn't do that would he still be here now mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like he obviously done it to like not put us through it yeah but it's just it is what it is isn't it do you know if uh, um he always told me Life is life. Everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. I, I know it's not. It shouldn't have happened, but no. everything happens for a reason. It has made me a lot stronger since it happened. Mm-hmm. But, but, look, but <laughs> your dad has done an outstanding job with you, mate. Because you're, you're in the paddock, you've always got a smile on your face. You're, you, you wear daft fucking clothing. <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're going around with top hats and pointy shoes have, and all sorts. I've, but I've always yeah. said, I've always said, like, me dad, me dad had his mottos and stuff like that yeah. and stuff he'd live by. And I have always said, no one's going to look at you as the kid wearing a tracksuit, full tracksuit. They're just going to think, what the fuck's, like, it's just what a snotty brat he is. So if I come to a race meeting in a full suit, checkered suit, waistcoat, top hat, why is he wearing that? Mate, honestly, I, th- I just think it's brilliant. You just you, you scream confidence, and I I had no idea about that. And I just think your your dad has just done a really good job with you, mate. You know what I mean? Because 
a lot of people, I mean, not even well, a lot, of, I mean, a it's huge one of them, people. Like I was saying to you before we started this, like when I get with girls and stuff, and they're like, why aren't you bothered that we've just broke up? And I said, because I have had so much shit happen in my life. <laughs> This is minor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No offense. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's just yeah. it's nothing. You get a is perspective, yeah. a different perspective yeah. of of things, and um, uh, it's one of the yeah. Like I said, f- like nobody should have to go through that at that age. But the fact that you've you've kind of you've moved on. But then again, it, like it, like I say, my dad passed away. It was horrible. I was crying every night. Like yeah, get, get, yeah. I want to see him and. Yeah. Uh, that's all blown over. Well, not blown over, but I'd gotten used to living with it. He's, he's passed away. I'm not going to see him. We go testing in Spain with Gary, and I was really close with Gary, and then Gary passed away yeah. on the way back from Spain. Indeed. So it was literally like fucking just a double jab. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just horrible. And as um, at that age, because we were sort of chatting about this earlier as well, coming through the ranks, especially around that sort of the first step in BSB, so like the Moto Three time, that's that's at the time where it's difficult to get much sponsorship to cover it, and it's mainly e- either people who have got good, real good sponsors, or people who have got either a wealthy family or a very committed family. That's the only way you can yeah. really go and race. Yeah. And um. For that to happen, obviously, with your dad at that age, to, feel, to then continue to race is, you know, it's. I, I well, presume it's like, a lot, it's, of, it's, a lot of people must have ju- it's, it's jumped like in. It's like Brent have got got me in this frame of mind now where anyone I speak to, they could possibly give us money. Do you know what I mean? That's that's how Brent is. Like, mm. I'm not saying he's a greedy bastard, but. <laughs> You need all the help you can it, get. It, it's a professionalism. I spoke to, a, it, I like spoke to commercially. A, yeah, yeah, I spoke to my mate the other day, and he works for a truck company, and they help these lads. I'm not going to say any names, but he helps these lads, and uh, and these lads said, "Would you be able to sponsor us more money because it's more expensive?" And the, the guy who owns his company said, "Why would I? You're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You just." What what are you trying to do? Yeah, you just you just riding bikes. You're doing what I'd want to do. Yeah, but I'd be paying for it. <laughs> so when you've got people like that, and you've got people like me and Chrissy and you that are trying to go to the next step, trying to go as far as you can, but then you've got people that are doing it as a hobby, but working it as a job. Yes, I. So, I said to my mate, I said, "Well, you need to tell him about me. You need to speak about me." He knows who I am. I like his shit on Facebook. If you, but with sponsorship nowadays, you gotta, you've got to be friends with them. Oh God, I yeah. Most people will help you through friendship, not a business side. Oh God, oh t- yeah, that goes without saying, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that goes without saying. So it's just yeah, it's just such a hard thing. Like and when that Gary did pass away, um, thankfully, A.D. Mason at Fireplace Warehouse, the Green Moto Threes, he took me on. And I rode for him for two years. Right. And uh, and we funded that with like what bit drips and drabs of money we had left yeah. and um, and stuff like that because I remember that you were a t- you, we, a tall tall lad on those bikes, weren't you? And you yeah. did really well to tuck in at that point. Come... Was it a similar sort of time you were in the British Talent Cup as well? Yes, I did the Open class and then they started the British Talent Cup class and I did British Talent Cup and Moto Three and BSB. Mm-hmm. But British Talent Cup was free. Mm-hmm. So if you're in that, you just had to pay hotels and travel and stuff like that. So that was all right. Yeah. So it was like a free championship. But that got really hard between me and RST. Right, yeah. They kind of cut my deal down because I was wearing Alpine Star and having to wear shark helmets because that's what you had to wear. Mm. And I got an email off them saying, we're not going to give you as much this year because you're doing British Talent Cup. I said, but... There's nothing I can do about that. I would wear RST every single day of the week if I had if I had a choice. Yeah, I think they're mint. They do everything you ask for. Oh, got amazing, just, they're, they're amazing just, company, amazing. amazing company. Um, Shout out, they are all yeah. RST riders. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, we're all RST <laughs> riders, aren't Woo! we? They're mint. <laughs> and I've I've been with them ever since I come to England. Neil Hodgson sorted the deal out for me because Neil used to manage me. Mm-hmm. Shut up, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you not know that these are these, like we're just it's mint it's just a different chapter I say, every time I say manage I will have been about 12, 13 so there's not much to manage but it's 
nice to say you had Neil Hodgson helping you. Yeah. I still speak to him now, like, and I, before the start of the season in PSB, I called him up and I said, what do you think? What's your honest opinion about me going on the superbike? And he said, just take it steady. He said, just, just don't rush it and make sure it is the decision you want to do. Yeah. Because obviously he's done it. He's Neil actually bit. did the same step. He went from a 125 to a superbike, I think, as well. I don't yeah. think he didn't go middle class. I was about to say, because you, we, we kind of skipped that chapter. So British Talent Cup, then you went into stock 600. Is that correct? Was it? Yeah. Stop. Yes. yes it three was, with yeah. A. By the way, uh, do you know Adrian Fireplace Warehouse? I don't. Adrian Sarah. Sarah's got a. I just want I want to mention this. <laughs> Get a plug cool. out there. Sarah, Go on, uh, Sarah's Sarah got one of those say. VR46 yeah. uh, f- a transport. Uh, Crew cab one. Yeah, the. What are they called? Ford, VR46 like edition. The Ford Transit. Yeah, custom. Like absolutely yours. unreal. And when when the British Grand Prix, when the British Grand Prix was on, she blagged it into the, into the MotoGP paddock and got Rossi to sign it. I'll be worth a fair bit of money then. I've been, I've been me- if they listen to this, I have been meaning to call you for ages. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I said, with work, you just flat out, you don't get a chance to call anyone. No, you don't. My car, I rag it that hard that the microphone for the speaker, the audio, has pulled out. So I have to take my AirPods with me every time I want to speak to someone. <laughs> and most days I forget them. So I can't be calling like people on my phone and stuff. But yeah, I have been meaning to call them and so speak f- to them. Like. From uh, the Moto Three days, you were you were quite big for Moto Three bike. Yeah, very big. Compared to competitors, yeah. And so you could clearly see you sort of needed to get on at six hundred, yeah. and then uh, Brent, I presume, provided the opportunity yeah. on the on the um, six hundred. Originally, we went to Apple Yards. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, we went to Apple Yards at the last round. I don't know why we leave everything till the last round, like. That is so stupid to do. Try and sort negotiations at the last round. Well, at least you're doing it. That's the main thing, isn't and, it? Uh, yeah, we went to Apple Yards. We had a meeting with them and stuff. And uh, yeah, it all seemed good. I was going to do Stock 600 with Apple Yard alongside Jack Kennedy and Brad Jones. Someone even in, made... This is in Stock, sorry. Stock 600. All right. Uh, like what they've done this year with Charlie Farrer and uh, Jack Nixon. Right, that right. Was, that's oh, what I yes. was going to be doing. Right. Um, and yeah, it was all looking good. And then... Last minute, they were like, we just can't see this working. Like, they didn't want to do it. Fair enough. There we it's are. Your team, not mine. Yeah, Fair exactly. Enough. That's it. All right, leave it at that. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? So, the guy that was ma- managing me at the time, Kevin Malloy, he spoke to Brent and uh, and said, we've got Storm here and he wants, he, he, he's keen to ride a 600. I'd never ridden a 600. I'd never, I don't know what the hell they felt like. Never ridden one. I'd ridden. No, I hadn't. I'd never ridden anything <laughs> bigger than a four fifty or a Moto three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna go and enter BSB Stock Six Hundred. I'm not gonna go and do club racing. I'm just gonna enter. Like, just do it. If you're gonna do Jump it, do it. Jump in the deep end. Hi, that's it. Because that's it. My dad's always been like, chuck him in the deep end. Yeah. Because you're either going to sink or you're going to swim, aren't you? Ah, it's one of the worst side. Um, so, yeah, it was like straight up in stock 600 doing it. But Brent was like, Brent didn't want to do it. Brent was like, no, no, not interested. Don't want to run on stock bike. I had enough with Taron, doing mm-hmm. it with Taron. And he was like, no, I don't want to do it. Because he ran the super sport bike and he ended up paying a fortune with it and stuff like that. And he was like, no, not interested, not doing it. Next thing, we're having a meeting in Bakewell. Like having a meeting, me, Kevin, my mum, and that, and Brent being Brent, he was, I think he was just intrigued. Like, what, what do they want yeah, to do? Scratch you? the surface and see what the crack he'd is. Like, yeah. obviously, like seen who I was and stuff like that, and obviously, probably seen my dad. And uh, yeah, we sat down have this meeting, and we're like, we haven't got anything. Like, I wanted, we wanted race six hundreds. Hmm. I want to do it. At this point, I'm still thinking. Do I want to be a full time racer? Like, do do I enjoy racing that much that I want to do it? Yeah. Because I think you're always questioning that. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you're, you're always like, do do I want to put all into this? Like, take the risk. I don't want to yeah. like let anyone down if it didn't make it and stuff like that. It all goes into aspect. Like, I'm a very positive person. Yeah. You, you know, I'm always like, I am gonna be world champion. Like, and I know a lot of people that actually know me and they will back me and say, yeah, you, you, Storm is going to be world champion. You know what I mean? 
So it's like, I am a positive person, but you've always got to have that thought that if you don't make it, you're going to look a cock. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the reason, yeah. isn't it? And you know that. Do I want to do this? That's... Do I want to do this? Yeah. It's easy to quit before you've started. There we are. Very deep. So I've gone with Brent, we're doing this meeting, and long story short, like I said to you inside, and I'm speaking to your dad, um, I sold everything. My mum had a motorhome, nice motorhome that we took racing. She sold that. Sold that for the racing. So we didn't have anywhere to stay. Actually, no. Sold that next year. to 2020, she sold that. Uh, I sold all my motocross bikes, everything. And we put every last little bit of money we got in. I think my nan and granddad digged in and helped. And like I said to your dad inside, I said, if I didn't do well last year, I probably would have knocked it on the head. Because I wouldn't have had anything else. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that I give everything yeah, for was... 2019. Everything. Like, I wished I never even sold them bikes, but I had to. Yes, I like, did. To make I the grid. I haven't got any bikes now. Mm-hmm. Like, I haven't got any supermoto bikes or nothing like that. My motocross bikes, are like, and I can't afford to get another one. Yeah. Like, but when I will, I will. And I'll, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I'll be straight back to it because I love it. Um, if anyone wants to, like, <laughs> anyone. <laughs> It's still hey. 79 at hotmail.co.uk. You know he's got the is. plugs out the way. There we go. That's good. Um, <laughs> if anyone wants to sort me one out. Um, I beat David Todd. Um, <laughs> that was it. I'll tell you what, that that, that Norton thing was outstanding. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the Norton thing later yeah. on, so carry on. Oh, so we, you're chucking we, all your money. We, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about oh, still. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, we chucked all the money at it, going at it. Good season. Like I said, I fell out with Jeff. I fell out with the famous Jeff Crust. I came into Brands Hatch, lost my shit, said, fucking bike's horrible, hate it. Like, I was proper pissed off. I don't lose my shit. I never lose my shit. But I thought, am I normal that I don't lose my shit? Like, am I normal that I keep calm? <laughs> um, I thought, I'm going to give it a go. And I lost my shit. Worst thing I ever did. <laughs> Jeff took me back. He said, don't ever fucking speak to me like that ever again. And it put me back in my place. And we've been best mates ever since. There we are. Speak to Jeff every week, most days a week. And it's just to have conversations, just to keep you sane. Mm-hmm. And just, <laughs> just about great, any, a, any random shit. That's so, a great mentor to have, Jeff yeah. Cross, with his experience. And so The bike's got... Probably, it's, it's literally conversations from... The bike's got new calipers. Oh, I've just got my Reliant Robin running. <laughs> it can be from anything. It's probably... Um, so like obviously we've had Jeff on the podcast yeah. and had all of his stories and his experience and and um it's pr- it's probably been very beneficial for you to have somebody there as a obviously it's not re- like replacing your dad but to have a strong yeah. male role model in your life to somebody to give you a on. slap and put you in a put and, you in your yeah place, put yeah. you in your place yeah. and have those sort of conversations and like you can't really think of anyone sort of better to do that so yeah. you'll have um no definitely it's just. It's a shame he lives so far away from me because yeah. I reckon I'd end up seeing him all the time. You know, like and no one's got a red a car. No, <laughs> <laughs> sunny, sunny red car, as he says. <laughs> says it's always sunny there. Cost, was, Costa del Red Car. Good, that's it. He was that's out it. on his Triumph Rocket today. I then he got one. robbed. Yeah. Has he got a Triumph Rocket? Yeah, the, you know, yeah. the Rocket 3 is the big ones. Yeah, yeah. When I worked at Superbike Factory Bike Shop, I dropped so many of them. Just pushing them. I dropped them. Loads. One of your customers will be listening to this right now, going, "Never oh, drop ridden hard or round nah, boof." Absolutely, nothing. Amazing milk, <laughs> mint bike. But yeah, he's been out on his track rocket today. He's got no MOT, nothing on it. He's like gone out on it. He says, "I insure it when it gets to the summer." <laughs> so you've just grasped out. You've just grasped out. Jeff crossed on chase the race, and well done. You'll be getting a knock on the door, going, "Right, yeah, son, D Valley." Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, back to that six hundred year. It was kind of shit or bust, and you you yeah. made, you made it work. You you did. End of the year, I did. Uh, um, went to Cadwell Park. I was running behind the pack, and Jeff always said to me, he said, if you watch the front guys, you get close enough to them, they're all over the place. Like, they're, they're, they're pushing to do what they're doing. Mm. And I was behind them at Cadwell Park, behind this front group, and we are going through Hall Bends. Most laps, they were on the grass. They were all over the place. And and instantly, I thought of Jeff. I thought, he was right. Like, who, what are they who doing? Who were the front guys then? Uh, TJ Tom's... Simon Reed, uh, Kevin Keyes, Corey McGreevy, Corey, is it Corey McGlinchey? Right. 
Uh, None of these are mugs at all. Yeah, like, <laughs> like the, seriously fast lads. Quick, like, um, and yeah, I was like behind the pack, keeping up with them, and then we well, was equally as sketchy at that point to no, stay with them, right? I've always not to blow smoke up my ass, but I've always my dad always said to me, a smooth rider is a happy rider, and he always told me to watch Lorenzo because Lorenzo, whenever he used to break out at the front, he would go. Because no one could dive him, he was in a rhythm, and mm. he'd just go. So I've always been smooth, because if you're smooth, you're not going to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're just going to keep going fast. Mm. So, and one thing I found from Cadwell, which I learnt quite quick, was don't jump them out. You're giving away all what? your secrets, aren't you? That's, <laughs> that's, it, that's it, exactly. <laughs> it. Oh, like yeah. you say, your wheels I've on got, the deck and you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been around there in a super bike yet? Because no. Cadwell didn't happen, did it? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'll just chuck a quick fact in there. there but we yeah, go. I I was coming over the mount and they were all like, oh, like, whoo, like getting a wobble on and shit. And I'd, I'd just come over it, rear brake it, like scrub it kind of thing. And I would just come in on them so fast. And I didn't think it'd work, but I just kept doing it all weekend and I managed to catch up to them. Like my sector times were quite good through that last sector. And... And everyone was like watching me and trying to tow me, and they're like, they couldn't work it out. But all I was doing was not jumping the mount. Wheels on the deck, getting because the drive, and off with you the go. mount, you've either got to send it or don't jump it. That's how it is. Because Josh Brooks can make it work because he absolutely sends it. <laughs> because he's jumping past all the horrible bit. I tell you what, you've cheered me up because I've never jumped it, and I've always wanted to. So I'm, with, I'm in his camp. Well, <laughs> I, I jumped it on a Moto Three, mate. Oh, you shite bag. You and <laughs> and a CRF 450. There we are then. Super Moto, when Nora Sport go there. Right. I jumped it there. There we go. Um, but yeah, yeah, Cadwell Park, I was behind him. And then I think, was it Knock Hills after Cadwell? I can't remember. But yeah, we went to Knock Hill and uh, it was like something clicked. But I really like Knock Hill. I think Knock Hill will probably be a click track for, ne- for me next year. Um I really like it because it's like a go-kart track. I know every bump. I took the time to learn it. I took the time to learn how to go over the chicane and stuff. Because on a Moto3, you've got to be so... Pinpoint. You've got to be so anal at what you're doing. Don't, don't look at me while I say anal. Like that. <laughs> just glazing over here. <laughs> just glazing over. Um, you've got to be so like perfect with what you do because of the bumps and stuff. That yeah. When I got there on a 600 and stuff, I was just riding it like a Moto3. I just threw it around. FP1, I was just P1 straight away. By like five tenths. And that was a breakthrough for you yeah. on the 600. And, and the rest of the, that season, I remember there was some real good rounds. at uh, Alton Park springs to mind you were real strong there. Yeah, and... Alton Park, I got the double win. Um, Did... young, youngest ever 600 winner. <laughs> <laughs> sponsor, sponsor me, still say so. I'm still after a motocross bike, if you want to put oh, that yeah. in there. And a super motorbike. <laughs> um, yeah, Alton Park, double win. That was amazing. Just an amazing feeling again, just to be on the top step again. And then last round, I could have won the championship. It was literally, it came down to the last lap I could have won the championship in my first ever season in Stock 600. But I think I ended up finishing third in the championship with how it all laid and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was so close to, to actually winning the championship. And can then you, Who was the last person to win Stock 6 in the first year? Can you, can you think of anybody? I don't know if Carl Ride did it. I know he won Stock 600. But yeah, I don't he know. did. He would have been the last person, yeah. Luke, Luke Hedger did it before did that. Um, so who's been the, the recent winner? Vickers did two years. Who won it last year? I can't even remember. Oh, Ben Luxton. Ben Luxton's done it for oh, years. Yeah. He was doing it when I was doing oh, it. Oh, mate, he, he made Stock 600. Ben, yeah. Mm. Is there an age limit on Stock 600? 25, is it? Um, 25. Yes, but it's... if you get top three, you have to, you move, have to move out. Mm-hmm. Right, that's why it's called the Junior National Stock Stock Thousand Stock Six Hundred. Got yeah. you. But have you seen in uh, they've changed National Stock Thousand to just National Super Stock, and they've dropped the Thousand thing because they're allowing Aprilia Eleven Hundreds and Ducati Eleven Hundreds in next year. So I'll be interested. I know uh, Ian Newton's running the Aprilias. I presume he's going for the new bike, uh, which is going to be an Eleven Hundred CC. But they can't run their their own electronics. They've got to run Motec, like in BSB. Hmm. So it'll be it'll be interesting. I don't know Does if they have to be got... full whiskey then. 
uh, traction control. And it's it's like no, with the Motec. No, no, no. I'm just saying with the Motec that it's limited because you. It's just all. It's the same yeah, all I, feel, I, I isn't it? I had to go on the stock thousand. Yeah, it's it's completely different to a superbike as you'd know. Anyway. Yeah, and that's um, Fraser Rogers and Ben Luxton are riding them. Yeah, it'll be inter- it'd be interesting to see if it ruins the Ducati as well because that would... that's money. A lot of cheddar in that, isn't it? So they, 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 well, they didn't up... run it before because obviously it has to meet a price criteria, it does, doesn't it? I think the main reason was the to run a Ducati, they have to run the um, it's like the old thousand yeah. one where they now with the it rules, kept breaking can... down with the lad that was on one. Luke it? Jones yeah. rode a bit for one, but now they can actually run the um, V four, right? You know, like the same as like a, what you would. I think I'm pretty but, sure that's so, right. Yeah, isn't no, so... that jo- Jordan Rushby riding one? He races one at club racing. I'm not sure if he's doing BS. Yeah. It's now eligible for BSB, but they have to run a Motec system, I think, so that right. the, they won't be able to run the traction control and really. Aye, so interestingly, the, the that's the Aprilia's biggest or has been the the Aprilia's biggest strength. Hmm. The electronics on the Aprilia, you can. Um, so over the last few years, you can set it for every fifty meters of the track. Never. So you can so you can change the traction control, anti wheelie, and all of that f- for each corner, mm. and engine braking and everything per corner, and it works through GPS. This this is a stock championship. If if you run into if you go into pit lane, it no, it through GPS it knows you're in pit lane and puts the limit on. If you pull up on the grid, it knows you're going to do a start, so it puts launch control on for your. They, that computer this is man a, is. This is a stock championship. <laughs> that's, that, that's all. That, I, I can't remember the guy that works for for the Ian Newton, but it's yeah. he. He's the guy that it, obviously you need somebody to do it. You need to be very switched on with a computer to do that, mate. You can't. You could actually do that on the BMW last year, but we never had anybody that was capable of doing it. But it, it, you can if you've if you employed somebody to do that full time, you can split it up for. I think it's every fifteen. Oh, sorry, you could do it. You can split it up if you had like some whiz on the computer yeah. you can like you could do yeah. a lot you could make it a lot more complicated I'd, I'd, I'd so say I'd... when I before the start of the season on the superbike I went and tried the stocker in Spain first I did a track date at Donington mm. and I crashed it first lap yeah, I took, really took the front into foggy S's on the three sighting laps with no limits <laughs> it happens to the best got of dispensation to do it I bet you felt like a, a right melon <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the me- me- melon, no. melon. That's putting yeah. it politely. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, I took the front, like smashed it up a bit. Gear link were there as well, so it was a good. There was a good gauge to go off once I'd actually got going. No like, ways up. Ben, ben Curry was there, and um, Westy was it? Westyman, Westy man, Westy man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was a good gauge, and I, I was pulling away from Ben Curry, so I was I was going quite well on the stock thousand once I actually got to it, and. And I think that was when Brent and Jeff knew, like, we need to get him on a thousand. Yeah. Um, and then we went and tested it in Spain. But I think probably the worst thing for me on the superbike was riding a stock thousand, because them stockers, like, they're so nice to ride. Like, they're, they're smooth. They take the bumps nice. You've got the traction control. Like, I, I was coming out of Melbourne Loop that day. I dare say Danny had the traction control wound up. I could go full percent throttle from like just coming out the corner. And it had wheelie, and I'd like the anti wheelie would kick in a bit. I'd rear brake it a bit. In the end, I told him to take it off because I don't think the anti wheelie is that good on him. Uh, so I ended up just doing it with my foot in the end, and I got got quite used to it. Mm-hmm. But they've got the auto blippers on him and everything. I know, and obviously, me superbike has, but they're a very generous bike. Like there's a lot going for him, the, the new ZX10. Yeah, and they're very they're very comfortable to ride in in stock though because obviously the traction control and stuff on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I went straight to Mon- Monte Blanco and I go first lap out on the superbike and all I can say about riding a superbike is imagine riding a Moto 3 with 220 brake horsepower. Is that what your thoughts are? Yeah. It, they're, they're very stiff. Because I, I, when I went to superbikes, I never, it wasn't with the same bike. So I went from riding a BMW stock bike to a Suzuki superbike. So right. it was really difficult to tell. Yeah. Like, obviously, the riding position is totally different, but it was difficult to. to well, I mean, was that Suzuki really stiff? Compare, yeah. But yeah. The, the one thing I noticed, and I wasn't sure whether, whether it was the chassis or whether it was the slick tires, but the, yeah, it was very, like, sort of yeah. rigid and unforgiving. They're, they're, and they're not I, the right bike to ride on British track. I couldn't believe how hard. But 
you just it is what it is, isn't it? It's How the same for could, everyone else. You could trail break. Yeah. And like the it, the I don't know if it's the profile of the front tire, but the way you can just t- you can turn in when, so late on a superbike. When when you'll line. have done it, you you will have had the good tires on, wouldn't you? Because everyone was moaning last year about the tires. Yes. But you wouldn't know any different. Exactly. I don't know any different, and so I did have with, quite a bit of chatter last year. I was going to say they were moaning with chatter yeah. last year, and it. I'll be honest, I didn't have a lot of feeling with the front end last year and we were trying everything. Mm-hmm. We raked the front end of the bike that much that when we went to Donington, the front tyre was hitting the radiator when I was braking mm-hmm. because we were, trying, right over. we were trying different things. I got black flagged because there was that much smoke coming off the tyre, off the radiator. Brent told us about that. It's just on the brake, just but, dragging in. But <laughs> the bike felt mint. The nose heavy them ZX tens anyway. I like. I actually like that. You feel. Over you the men front are ride them. The men are ride them like that, like on its arse with the front high. That's how you meant to ride them in it. Mm. But Tits. I like riding like that. So trying to make it do what it shouldn't do is what it is. Oh, pissing the wind a little yeah. bit on that situation. But, it's each each of their own in terms of setup. Isn't yeah, it? people. So definitely. how how much style like did you have to change? Because me and Chrissy have talked about it loads, and like super bike riders, you've just got to. To pick it up as quick as you can and fire it. Yeah. How much of a how much of a transition a transition transition was that for you then going from stock six hundred Monty Blanco as a ZX ten superbike? Were you just trying to ride it on a tier or did it come stock six hundred? A big thing was for me was um, when it clicked was because Jeff said to me when Jack Kennedy rode for GR on the superbike, he used to eye side a lot because he would just whack it on. So Jeff said to me, he said. He whacks it on on a superbike. What do you think he's doing on that super sport bike? And he's winning. That's all I was doing on the stock 600. Yeah. Coming out of the corners, bang, just give it it. 600, just flat out. To everyone's going to watch a BSB going, here come the high sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Storm, 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 Storm just ran flat out. <laughs> Back in the sky. But uh, yeah, so was that, that... that was literally it. That was like a turning point. I just, I was like, just give it everything. So going on to the suit bikes, were you just very conscious of not trying to do, to yeah. try and calm that throttle down yeah. a little bit and just, and uh, looking at you. Because you, them you... slicks, they, they go and then they come back and then they just go, fuck you. And then they just, they just try and kill you. Mm. Like they do a proper weird tyre. As, as a, uh, your first year. And because the... they're that stiff as well. Mm. Right. As, as your first year in the championship, um, at, you know, you did a very like a, a very reasonable job. Um, oh, you'd thank you. Hardly any, hard, you, you hardly crashed no, all year, did you? No, but that's the thing, though. I you crashed. Did... I crashed once. Yeah, yeah that, and that, on, that on oil a... at Silverstone. For a, so you can't <laughs> exactly. You can't cl- class that because like anything, anyone would have crashed on that oil. So really, you didn't crash all year. Dumb. So to get through your first year in super bikes and uh, like nice and safe, learning each time and uh, getting some. Because you can, you can basically say I went through a full year of super bikes and I didn't crash. That's and not that people battled, will remember I battled, that more. I battled with uh, Hector Barbara, Peter Hickman, Danny Buchan, Lee Jackson, some big names. The, the, the times are within a fag paper, oh, but you see, the thing is, nothing. you you could have single handedly ruined your career, like Chrissy, like you could have gone out every suit by race. No, no, like Chrissy says, not like Chrissy, man. Not <laughs> like, no, 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 sorry, I, I missed that bit out. So, like Chrissy says, you could have single handedly ruined yourself by going out, going, I'm going to try and win. Bang high side, bang high side, bang. First, knack yourself. No, nah, you've, you've, you you've got to. You've got to respect a bike. Look, looking back on your first year in suit of bikes, is it is it how you you thought it was going to go? Good question. I don't know. Did you just not have no expectations whatsoever? In you must have had some idea of where I don't you were know because it was in. my first season. So we mm. like how, in terms of one to ten, how successful would you have classed that as a season? In terms Good. of yeah. Good. I got top top thirteen. Like you, at you sort of achieved. Donington. You achieved yeah. what you I was wanted. Ba- to. I was battling inside the top ten towards the end of the season, mm. and I, I probably shouldn't say this, but my goal this year is to be in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, good. And good. I would always like to have more, mm-hmm. and maybe we will. Maybe if we get that set up, maybe we will be up there. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But you're not. You're not battling round on stock six hundreds now. You're battling with teams that are ploughing like half a million pound into their bike to be at the front. Mm. So you're battling with them. I'm not saying Brent has a shit bike because it is mint. That Kawasaki is no different to the factory Kawasaki that's in there. But it's mm. not a Ducati. You know, the... Them Ducatis are good. Like that's what I mean. You know what I mean? When you're talking about the, the the sheer money element of it, you know what I mean? You can. Yeah. And we've, we've got a new bike coming as well next year as well, haven't we? 
like the upgraded. Yeah, the, the ZX10. Carrier, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you two on them. That well, one. we, me and Jeff always said last year there was a few things with the ZX10 that it needed. Like it just needs this, needs that. Could do with more downforce on the front, obviously with the chatter. And we were like, we just need. All we needed last year was half a second. We just needed to find That's half a mean. second to be, to be in the mix, to be battling with massive names. Yeah, massive half a second, names yeah. like good riders, Taron McKenzie and stuff like that. Like good names, they needed half a second. You put it this way: this <laughs> that is this, so good. This is what I say to people. Silverstone last year, the lap times I was doing, like the pace last year was fast, yeah. like really fast, um, like faster than when Scott Redding was there, like the pace was that fast, yeah, because there was no leaders, there was nothing, there was, like last last year they were going off Scott Redding, how fast he would go, yes, because he's the boy. Hmm. Um, last year, COVID short rounds, everyone wants to win, like you- GP. Mm-hmm. Marquez is gone. Everyone wants to win. That's Aye. what BSP was like. So everyone was just on it, like just flat out. Um, Silverstone last year, the lap times I was doing, I would have won the race the year before by thirty seconds. Wow! With the lap times I was doing, <laughs> that puts it in perspective. <laughs> and I think I was like point. Five off first that weekend. That's mental, isn't it? That that just shows but how that's competitive, how fast the pace is mm-hmm. last year. Well, it was any moments last year where you've like you've seen something special on track, maybe in qualifying or practice, where like somebody came past and like really impressed you. No, there was. Uh, why no? Yeah, I'm about to tell you something. Let's see. Yeah, um, not as much in the season because. I was at the back. I was at the back. I was trying to go as far as I could. I was battling with people at the back. I was just doing my own thing, so I didn't really see much. And qualifying, everyone would just pull over and not let me follow them. So I was literally like watching a film with no film on. <laughs> like I was just doing my own thing. Yeah. I was creating my own film. Um, but one thing impressive I did see was when we were testing at a ref, came into the double right... Christian Eden had just come past me and I was feeling good, like new tyres on. Jeff had just sent me out new tyres. He said, like, go and smash... Oh, my ear's killing. Um, <laughs> go and smash out, like, a good time. Like, go and get some good time. You can in. take them off if you want. You don't have to wear them. No, we're in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, like, go and smash some tyres. Christian Eden just come past me. And this is the point where we're, we're battling with chatter. Like, it wasn't very nice. You just... It is what it is. Yeah. You either fucking ride it or you just whinge about it. Yeah. So I was trying to do the best I could. I was moving my style forwards, backwards. In the end, I was loading the front too much. So once I stopped doing that, I was using more rear brake through the corners to load the rear end more so it'd pull more weight off the front. And it got better. It was I didn't say it'd gone. It got better. Yeah, manageable. Aye. It was better. So Christian Eden's come past me. I'm like, yes, sick. I'm going to tag onto the back of him. He's on this Ducati. Bang, 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 bang. He's gone into this double right. I've gone in and the front just folded on me. And I thought, oh, well, he, well, how did he just do that? Yeah, how was he? <laughs> You're he... sliding on your face going, where's he going? Well, no, I didn't crash. <laughs> right. I took the front and then it gripped and come back. But I was like, well, how... How's he making it? And I'm how not, did yeah. he do that? Because I've always been like, if you're following someone, well, they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So I followed him. Well, he can do it, I can do it. And the front went. And at that point, I was like, fucking hell, what, what can I do? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, just doing what I can. and Back yeah. to the boardroom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, back to try again, mm-hmm. and yeah, all season we were battling with we chatter, but so was everyone else. It's not just me. I'm not saying it was just me. Oh, everyone should feel sorry for me. Bike was chattering. Well, it's not. It was everyone. Yeah, and I was struggling with it, just like everyone else was. Um, but yeah, it's it is what it is. Do you know? Uh, not long ago, we we're down at the Stauff, uh, like it's like Stauff UK. Yeah. The um. The factory, which is near Sheffield. Oh, we're think, thinking about getting like a pit bike track down there. You know. Are there? Yeah. What, in the car park? We, we, I was thinking like, get my CRF done. Because um, when was that fitness test on Friday, Brent was talking about um, speaking to someone about a pit bike track or something. Oh, right. For you to go riding. Apparently you've been doing some work there. There's a pit bike track there or something. Oh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's not, not to do yeah. stuff, though. Uh, but yeah, when we're down at um, Stouff HQ, the, the bro- Brent 
brought a, <laughs> so a simulator. I am really, I'm confused. <laughs> I'll tell you after the pod, but it, um, Brent brought a, a simulator, which was yeah. the, another, it's the Moto Train. Moto Train, yeah. It's on Instagram, Facebook and stuff, if anyone wants to check out. Amazing Basically, they, they put the, the, like, the super stock bike into a, it's like a front wheel clamp and a rear wheel. And it's set up with, um, so the the front brake is set up with a, a like a pad. So when you pull the front brake, it sends a signal which drops the front fork. Yeah, it had, a, it had like a clamp to the top of the um, headset, like mm. stock bit, yeah. The yokes. Mm. Yeah, the yokes. That's the one. Uh, onto that, down to a wire which like pulled the front end of the bike down when you brake. To simulate like the front like drop you're braking. And uh, everything's wired up, so all of the... You, we didn't actually put the back brake and the gear shifter, but you can do that. Yeah, no brother. And um, and basically, you watch you watch a lap of somebody else doing, like, say, Silverstone or wh- whichever track it you choose, and then your goal is to simulate what's going on. So you're not actually... You're, you're not actually making the telly... Ah, your yeah. input, like, for example, if you roll the throttle, the screen just keeps going flat out. But the goal... <laughs> I'm a tart. The, right. the goal, <laughs> yeah, the goal is to basically... You, you can go left on a right. Yeah. yeah, the goal is to try and match what's happening yeah. on screen, right. and then yeah. af- after you've done the lap, it print it like shows you the s- the telemetry of like the throttle, how the close, brakes, the gears. how close you were to them. Interesting, and yeah. you, you have to kind of match that. Now, I thought it, unbelievable technology, really, really cool, yeah. and I think obviously you use the same muscles to throw the bike because you are throwing your actual bike left to right. So in terms yeah, yeah. of with no like. Uh, when you no, throttled no, no it, engine, no engine. When you throttled it, the bike could pick up. So it simulates that. So, like, say if you leant so, over, if you try to just pull the bike up with your abs, it would wouldn't feel realistic. But if you touch the throttle, it brings you. So it actually up. simulates the engine down, inertia. Yes. So actually, the the, the, the downside to it was double right at a ref, double lefts at Silverstone. You'd go around the corner, you'd give it a little bit, and the bike could go, and so, you're still yeah. downside. Ah, you go right. to the next left because it's a double left and you can't get it back down because right. it's just pulled it upright. Now, yeah. if, if you were, I think there were there about 12 grand or 20 grand, I can't remember. Something like that. I think say say, yeah. twel- say if there were 12 grand, if if you were, if you had sort of 12 grand spare. I don't think they're that's that's one. One. I think, I think, I think <laughs> about the price of like an enduro bike. I, I thought that, well, mm. let's, do, let's just say 12 grand. Like if, if you if you had 12 grand spare and you raised we'll get and, you, discount. and you say put, put it in your garage, it would be probably better training than say doing press ups or gym work because you, yeah. you are simu- You could do like a race distance. Even if simulate. it wasn't, even if you didn't have the screen, nothing like that. You had your bike linked up to something like that, and you just throw it from side to side. That would be the best workout you could do. Yeah, for the say, using the same muscles and stuff. Now, I th- it won't take much, but all what for me, all what they need to do is set it up like a PlayStation, so that if you whatever you do with the controls, it then does that on yeah. the screen. Because... But you can you can link X- Xbox up to it and stuff. Can you? Yeah. Right. Well, one, once they get that sorted, and it, that that that'll be absolute, get back to us. That'll, yeah, <laughs> that'll be unbelievable. But obviously, there's a process for like making things work, and they're in that process, and it is really impressive. But it's a little it bit of more. more work, and it'll be absolutely unreal. And um, yeah, if it. You, even just to have like at the track, you know, for for like people to have a go on and get. Yeah. And now, stuff. to be fair, I'm I'm glad you actually brought this up because at first I looked at that and it looked like a bit of a gimmick. You, that's the truth, you know. Just looking at you like that, you thought that doesn't, you know. Now now that you've explained when you're hitting the front yeah. and it's lifting up, you think nah, that doesn't look like it looks mm-hmm. look like an expensive gimmick. But to be fair, it doesn't sound like no, it's it a proper, at all. Proper you know, piece it, of kit, yeah, like. and it sounds bloody brilliant. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I'm just kicking the table out of the gaff. Yeah, Which is one of them like. Going back to my dad when he raced, he would play a game called Toka Touring Car. Like, really old game. Yeah. But he would play that to go round these tracks to learn them, to know where he's going. It's exactly the same with that motor trainer. Yeah. If you can get the track on there with an onboard footage, you can do as many laps as you want round there. That's and how... you're actually on a bike. But that's how people have so done that'll it. So the... that'll be the closest thing you can get to actually going round. Imagine doing that at the TT. Oh, I must get this question in then. Any thoughts about the roads then for the future? No. No. Mm, Scarborough? It's a... Yes. Yeah, I did say when I went to Scarborough. I know the story, so you might as well. You'd have to say, that is road racing, isn't it? That's pure road racing. I well, yeah, it's a road race. I'll tell you what, though. Yeah, it's, what a bit, impl- it's a bit more of a circuit. I'll tell you what, the most dangerous circuit we've ever done is uh, Norton Donington Hall. 
So no, that, that's, like, no and burnout. Minor. That's eh? minor. That, mate, that's right, minor. that, no, we had... So that, 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 mate, it was, it was absolutely nuts. Like, just hate, like, hay bales, it was, like, crossing potholes, everything. I'll tell you what, but what a laugh, man. Absolutely what a laugh, that Norton day out. It really was. Did you win that? Uh, no, I never won. My God, he was so close. Now, I'll tell you what, what... I have been really now, close. The, f- the, first ta- the first time I saw him, was with your dad and your sister at Teesside Moment. Now, the first time I got to actually chat with you a couple of years ago, and I've just got to clear this up right now, you are a total different man now, and I've got so much respect for you, really do. But at the time, I wanted to cave your skull in yeah, two years ago, honestly. I remember you were no, there. No, no, you were, just you, wheelie, had... you were just wheeling this pit bike, walking around, you're fucking, I'm King Dick and that, and I'm just thinking, what an absolute cock sniff of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just wanted to put, honestly, I'm just like, what a di- what, I'm but... changing my name from Lord Stacey to cock <laughs> <laughs> no, but at the time I just thought you cocky little, and I tell you what though, that for me, what separated that immediately, I've never seen you like saw you go on a pit bike. He hopped on this CR five hundred and he rode it like he stole it, and it was just like that lad. And I blew it up. You did, I. <laughs> and like honestly, the thing is for me, it was like at the time I just thought, what a cocky lad, and you just proved why you were cocky. It was just like. Bloody hell, you were absolutely on the rails on this two-stroke CR500. Oh, believe me when I say there'll be some good like edits coming with that CR500. It's still blown up. Oh, God. It costs, it's quite expensive to get them rebuilt. Yeah. To it get is. casings and stuff like that for <laughs> them. Um, but, yeah, when that's rebuilt, there's going to be some sick, like... Um, LSDs, with it, you know, like proper Mint. like sounds and stuff what, like that. What's LSD? Um, it's a drug. I know that, but what, what, what are you referring to? Um... They all put them on YouTube, don't they? Like LSD, you know, um, Lifestyle Diary. Oh, I, that's a new one yeah. for me. There we are. But like, so it was at this weekend and it, like it was like a, a knockout thing and it was, it really was a supermoto track, you know, without the jumps, you know, like the, the yeah. bike, a big like 450 there was, there suited was, that there track There was gravel on the corners. Exactly, yeah. that's it. You know, like Josh really Brooks bad. was on Nobbies was, on a Kawasaki and he, there he, was he moss. binned it. Everyone was binning bikes and people. There was were, moss on the straight. Like green moss. Honestly, there was, and like I was like I was like there on a pit bike. Yeah, Richard Cooper was there on a yeah. pit bike. There was just such a melee of different bikes, know, but everyone you know was the, on the pace. Do you know the one reason I remember you from that? You thought I was a cock sniff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you sniff while you're saying that. Um, you had a Honda Grom there that weekend. Oh God, what a laugh that was! I. I kept pestering you for a go on that. Mate, I said, just let me have a go on it. I was like, I said, why, why won't you let me have a go on this? It girl? wasn't my bike. It was me. <laughs> it was my sponsor's daughter's bike, right? And it was just in the back of the van. You know what I mean? I pulled it out and I was just going around on it. And I, bear in mind, I've seen him like fully, like stamping on the back brake, fully bars locked, <laughs> drifting in the first corner. I'm like, yeah, mate. Of course you're gonna have a go on that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just, just go away. So that, that, that he's like pestering me. I'm just like, will you just piss off? Like, and then, you know, I, and really then I remember just... the one thing I, I really like you for this was when we were in the ball and we were like having food, and I was there on my own because obviously, like, I just went there and I stayed in the hotel. I think my mum dropped me off, and I was like, I don't know how old I'd have been then, sixteen because I had my fifty cc. Wait. No, I would have been 15. So I was there at 15 on my own, in a hotel on my own, just doing this racing event. No one, like, I knew people there, but, like, not many. And and you spoke to me, like, all night in the ball, like, you were just there, like, just speaking to me, just being sound with me. And it was just, it was just nice that you were there and, like, speaking to me. And I don't, it's things like that I don't forget. Because you were like you were dead sound with me. No way, I went that. that you, you treat people like you want to be treated yourself, but I, 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 like no, no, that's the truth though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like there yeah, it was just good crack, good atmosphere. I tell you what, the whole thing was absolutely brilliant. But my favorite part of this story though is like there was a couple of supermoto lads, including David Todd, British. You know, he's won British titles and all sorts. So anyway, we're looking at the sheets. The crank absolutely shits itself on the CR500. And we're like, what? He's just going, I need a bike. I need. Was that the following year? No, no. Same no, year. First, first, that first was the year. first year. So, anyway, this bloke, right? Like Davey's racing, like nemesis in Supermoto. You know, he said, oh, yeah, just just use my bike. Yeah, he never tear. hopped on it. Never and rode it. These two into the final. I'd never ridden this He's bike. He's never ridden all. the bike. And he was absolutely it was, oh, a midge's dick of beating Davey. I mean, it was just absolutely outstanding to watch, and it was just. Have you ever done any super, like British supermoto events? <laughs> just just fancy a go. Wah, 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 just that. I did. I've done like Norris Sport because it's just easy to go and do. But that's more tarmac, get, isn't it? Without yeah, the jumps. Uh, no, Norris Sport's dirt and everything. Oh no, no, I meant a Cadwell. Is it 
did they have yeah they have Cat dirt Cadwell, section? no there's no dirt section aye so it's like the, yeah. the tom but, yeah. yeah but like I've done other Norwich sports yeah. where it is dirt right. and stuff like Three Sisters has got a tabletop and stuff oh it looks mint that and I've still done well in that like yeah. really well Um, they did one at Rockingham before it all closed and I won one of the races and I made Jordan Bannon lose the championship because I I like you coming picked to, him yeah I'd, I'd, um, he was battling for a championship. I was just there for a weekend. I oh, yeah. laugh on my old CRF 450, coming to turn one because, like I said, I've grown up with pit bikes, grown men. I don't give a shit. If you're in my way, I will you're, come past. You're there to race. Doesn't yeah. matter what you're on pit bikes. So or not. I've come into turn one, slam it down as many gears as I can. I've just slid it into him, <laughs> and just pushed him out of the way. Next thing I hear, someone told me after the race, he tried to kick me while going down the straight, and I didn't. I didn't even know he'd done it. <laughs> And I, I like pulled away and left him in the race, and like, and I did really well. By the way, have you seen what's happened to Rockingham now? At the moment, it's a car park. They've turned it into a car park. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like the, the whole track, the whole track's just full, like ten cars. It's bad, for that, isn't it? Just lined up. I don't know what it is. Is it for like exports or something? Or so it must be something. It must know. be something. It looks mad. It's such a waste do, of a track, you know. That, that, they do, they, spent, um, they spent about two hundred million, I think, making that for NASCAR. And the, the idea was to get na- it to attract NASCAR over, and they they used the wrong. That'd be so cool. It was like the wrong um, tarmac. The tarmac wasn't like porous enough or whatever Aye. and uh the so the the water it was something to do with the water drainage and it, anyway so the nascar couldn't race there and then it ended up getting used bsb went there in two it's like, a sketchy track on it oh yeah and I think i've never rode a big bike around there i've did i did a thunder sport meeting but not that we didn't use the outside you know like at daytona 200 where they yeah. use the, the outside yeah, yeah. um but yeah, it was just the infield, and to be honest, it was a pretty good little track. I, I enjoyed it. I've, I've seen on boards of people like them, you know, the Ninja three hundreds. Yeah, and they've been like flat out around there. They've come off the bank and they've come into the chicanes, and because it's that off camera and stuff, they get to the chicane and they just go bang and tuck the front and just come yeah. off. Jesus. Because it's that rough and the mm. change of direction and stuff. I tell you what, did you so did you watch fast. the Daytona two hundred? Yeah, obviously Brandon won it, didn't? Yeah, it's your mate with Brandon, aren't you? Each got the same trainer. So I'll be training with Brandon when he comes back to you. Oh, very good. How, uh, the next drinks are on here, making a forward, and now got me. How do you think he'll do in British Super Sport this year? I mean, it's not really for me to say what um, someone would do, but yeah. Um, opinion. Like, do you think he'll chance I've, for the I've raced. I've raced with Brandon quite a few times now over the years, and I've always beat him. But um, I don't know. I've, the only time I've ever met him I've not was... really seen, when he came over to England on a 600 he didn't do very well hmm. has he been on a 600 yeah he, he was with um, what's it called now the one that Kevin Keyes and stuff ride for the, it's a it's like not, oh, G, GNS G, GNS that's yeah, it he yeah. rode for them Right. Okay. And he didn't. He didn't do very well. So he rode the same, um, the fabulous warehouse in Moto Three and won that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because I was commentating on the race when he won the championship. I went up to see Fred, and I don't know anything about Moto Three. I don't know any of the riders and that. And so I was like, yeah, the. Uh, I was reading the screen like Brandon, <laughs> but uh, I did meet him over in Cartagena, and uh, I bought him a coffee in the clubhouse, and he he seemed like a lovely bloke, no, really, actually, really really nice, nice. friendly, and um, in I've fact, got I on think, with him ever since. I'm sure I once t- I once keeps, mentioned. Him on this he podcast, keep, and he we, sent us a message saying thanks for the shout out or something. Yeah, so, he keeps um, we keep saying like I want to go over to America and do some super motoring with him. Cause yeah, that's looks he's always got nice. bikes because obviously, like you said, I can slide super motors about. It's men. And did you see that thing he did in Times Square? Yeah, that's so illegal. He took he took a super. It was at a super <laughs> motorbike <laughs> it's so in illegal. the middle of Times Square and started doing a burnout, burnout in the middle. It, it is literally like I thought. It was, I thought that must have been like an organised event. That's he didn't mint. have a helmet on and stuff, did he? Or he might have. I can't remember. He had a helmet on, yeah. But yeah, he's just uh, like Class. it's yeah. It looked, <laughs> it looked photoshopped, didn't it? Like mad. if we did somewhere like that, we'd oh, just would be straight oh, I... prison for And he's um, <laughs> look, you can't, you don't really know from social media, but just from his from his social media, he looks like he has the life of Riley in the states, yeah. like like really cool life and like always out on the supermotos and. Yeah, and fair play to him he trains hard he trains hard and he's done well and... yeah good on him uh, for super sport do you, do you see who would you sort of obviously you've got Jack Kennedy we've got Kyle Smith we've got some of the young I think lads it'll be really, I think it'll be really interesting to see how uh, Kennedy goes on that 6v6 yeah, mm. I'm looking forward to that I'm really I'm looking, really looking forward, forward to that because 
he can win on the. Did have you seen Yamaha? Yeah, because yeah. he's he's signed to race for Dave Tyson, and it was Bike Devil, the Bike Devil race, and they were the sponsor. Mm. But then um, I, I've not seen this release, but on Facebook, because I follow Bike Devil, and I got a notification the other day to say it's Bike Devil racing's been changed to DB racing. So I don't know if they've lost. I, I, I'm just going. Could be anything, yeah. Could have because lost the sponsorship. An, and then I seen Luke, Luke Mossy, Moss, yeah. Luke Mossy isn't racing, so. Um, so what, what's your bets? What do you think Luke's going to do? He'll be in superbikes, I'd have thought. I'd imagine he'll get another really? ride in superbikes. Good question. Good question. There isn't any seats available, I can. Not that I not, can No outstanding of. seats available no. at the moment. Nothing like But what a lot of people have done, though, and they've got quite good rides from it now, is uh, like reserving as a spare rider mm. you know if someone hurts themselves right because so, you look at Gino Ria yeah <laughs> he's in the prime example from doing that there's always opportunities arise so yeah I'm sure we'll we will see Luke back on the, back on the grid uh, I had something else to ask you there about uh, oh yeah it's so in um, in super sport do, do, do you think yeah is, do you have like a, anyone you think's like tipping them for the championship or would you say Jack yeah, yeah. I'm what about, I am, I, stocks, I'm, what about stock six? Do you have a stock six? Uh, I'm gonna big up my man uh, Daniel Brooks. He's training with me as well. Oh, he, he seemed to finish quite strong last year. He did. Yeah, he had a real. But strong... there's a, there's a lot of lads that are uh, getting quick in it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like Charlie might go really well. Yeah, I hope so. Charlie, uh, there's news. I don't know if you've seen Charlie Farris just signed to race for. It's like Appleyard, Appleyard support. Oh, you were seeing that before, team, right? Yeah. Him and uh, is it Jack Nixon? Jack Nixon, yeah. And uh, so they're they're pairing up in Stock Six Hundred, and uh, it's all it, it. Do you know what? It feels so long since we've been racing, but it is coming soon. And by it, the time this podcast in. comes out, then we'll be we'll be testing sometime soon. BSB tests start. I think the first one got cancelled, didn't it? But then we're yes. I can't. I, I don't actually know the dates off my head, but sometime soon. Might <laughs> I'm, I'm come quite on, Chris. Gla- you're a journalist. I'm, quite, I'm quite glad it's been pushed back. To be honest, so right? Why just, is that then? Just get more training in. Right. Because I've, I've, I'll be honest. I've I've never trained. Well, you know, you know we just bike fit, aren't yeah, you? Constantly never, on that. Never, so there we go. Never ever trained, and last year it was, it was tough trying to ride a superbike without doing training. But like I said, you're working, you're doing yeah. stuff like that. But You've got quite I've, a manual manual yeah, job, haven't I'm you? Landscape so. gardener. So Which Monday to Friday, landscape gardening. It's just. Yeah, you're moving slabs and stuff. I thought I'd beat Chrissy on the weights, but he absolutely schooled me on Friday. <laughs> heavy books, that. Why you you've joined hey, uh, the, heavy. Sam Yassin, the, yeah, the beginning um, of a bit of personal training. Well, all I did today was I did my upper body. Thank did you, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back and you'll be just bashing them yeah. out. That's it. So... Yeah. It was, that that facility was unreal. Yeah. For the for people that don't know, we went to uh, Loughborough University, and uh, to, I'm going to try and speak to uh, Steve Harris and see yeah. if we see if he fancies doing a podcast because I think it'll be really interesting yeah, for people. That'd so, be really interesting. But um, yeah, basically the support of should we have a fitness test because that would be yeah. the funniest thing in the world. The support He's done it. I think you just need. I'm, that. I'm, I can barely run a bath. Never mind a distance. The, so I think it'll be. I think I think the results would be interesting. Man, I would smash on the weight. So I'm, sure I'm, a, you would. I'm a power. House, look at us. <laughs> the um, the, su- the support of your eyes must be fucked as well. <laughs> the the um, it's basically Loughborough support services. Loughborough's, uh, p- I think it's the best facility, best uh, university in this country for sports and sports science. And uh, yeah, the facilities were literally unreal. And um, the, when we went there, we did we did physio, we did a nutrition talk, we did lab testing. And we did a gym assessment, and like all, it was like a full day. And uh, we get our, we get like a breakdown on Friday, and, and I think they come back with like a training plan where where we could do with like being stronger and fitter and in certain areas. Yeah, they plan it all out. Exciting get, stuff. Yeah. So uh, you know, it was, so you know um, what to do. It was it was very nice of Brent to organise that for us, wasn't yeah. it? Because it, I, I don't think it's cheap for the day, but yeah. it's um, I, I, well worth. I've going. wanted something like that for a while, you know, just to open your eyes. Yeah, just to know what to actually eat and stuff like. I didn't realise, but the stuff you're actually eating isn't too bad as long as you're working it the right way. Yeah. That's basically what they were saying, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like the best food he kind of said for recovery was like banana bread. Like he said, that was really good. And I tried a bit today and (laughs) it's gorgeous. (laughs) So (laughs) nice. I tell you what, we had a, a canny scrant tonight for our team. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, Karen, she's she's a goddamn angel, that woman. So let's say. it's almost like I think you look at it. Your watch there, your dad's watch, and you'll be like, no, "Oh, you got no, work all, tomorrow." No, all I all I was thinking was, "You went, 
oh yeah, this podcast will be about an hour. It's been two hours already. Wait, it? it's that's what happens when you have Google. Honestly, yet again, I'm so yeah. sorry for being late. Um, but I think I think we should wrap I'm, up a couple. I'm of... not bothered. Good we man, keep going. Good man. So I think. Uh, for as this long year as I coming... get at least an hour's sleep tonight. Yeah, you'll be all right, Grant. But uh, so the future for this season coming, you're back on teammates, super bike racing. But my last question for you is where do you want to end up? Worlds, MotoGP, what, where, what, what's, what's the dream, it son? Is... What is the dream? Like I said before, I said before, like, I, I, I want to be in World Superbikes. Like, that would be a proper yeah. goal. Um, and I believe if I work hard yeah. and keep going at the rate I'm going, take me time, just do it the right way, don't rush it, don't hurt myself. Like, I've never broke a bone in my body, touch touched, wood. Touched, yeah, yeah, there you are, touch the, touched, I've touched touched the royal it. table. And I get people all the time, oh, don't say that, you'll end up doing it. But I always say it, like, yeah. I've never done it. Because yeah. I think I'm too, I think too much while I'm riding, like, take your time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. That's my favourite saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I'll do it in two. I'm going to try and do it in two. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> but yeah, I think my goal would be to be in like World Superbikes because I think in this day and age now, MotoGP is just such an unachievable goal nowadays. It's very difficult. It's for so hard. Coming from our country with the system that's in yeah. place. Mm. From um, And also, to be fair, in terms of your physical, like your height, if you look at MotoGP, they're all midgets. They're all, they're, they're, yeah. they're all, they're all yeah. small, small, small men. Where bikes, there's some big lads and obviously like the likes of Camille and people like that. Van yeah. Similar sort of size yeah. to you, aren't they? But um, yeah, no, but that, you're being realistic and I yeah. like that. You know what I mean? That is, no, mint. No, no, it's just, yeah. It is what it is, isn't it? World Superbikes, it'd be nice to just sit comfortably, Speak, you know, have a nice. I, I can, I can generally, I can generally see it happening because you, you were di- like two years ago when I met you. You know what I mean? You're a different man now. You no you punch me. I wish no, you did. No, 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 no. The thing, the thing is, I have been wrong a hundred times over. You know, and I'm, I'm over the moon, mate. I really am over the moon with the man you've become the day. I feel like a proud father. <laughs> Just tearing up here. Yeah, stop doing that. You're about to be the best. <laughs> but no, honestly, no. But hey, fantastic. Speaking of world superbikes as well, we've got a, we've got a few giveaways today. Yeah. We're the, we're spoiling, spoiling the listeners. Uh, the first thing is, uh, do you know Billy Art? You might have seen him on yes, Twitter, I, yeah. Instagram, various things. Very good YouTube channel. Give him a, very, give him a link up yeah, there. He's very kindly for the YouTube people who will be able to see this. This was uh, Tom Sykes on the ZX10. And I'm pretty sure that it's an artist proof. So I don't think they're for sale anymore, but it's whatever it is. It is a beautiful uh, drawn. And to wit, for a chance to win that, all what you have to do is go on the YouTube, this video on YouTube, and just comment anything in the in the comments. Last time when we said that, you said comment boobs, and I totally forgot. And there was I was just getting notifications <laughs> all day, boobs, 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 <laughs> boobs. And I was like, what the hell? So have we got a word for this show? That you would like Storm, to pick? you're the guest. I think you should pick it. Go on then. Make it relatively clean. Like, no swear words. <laughs> boom. <laughs> if, if, we've got, if we've got booze, maybe boom. 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 So you they are. Boom. By Storm Stacey himself. But, there, there we go. And <laughs> if you're interested, head over t- to see more of Billy's work. If you go over, I'm pretty sure he's got a website, but if you go over to his Twitter page or Facebook, it's Billy Art. And um, yeah, it is mega. The other, we've got another giveaway. And um, Bloody hell. We've, there's a place just down the road from here, which is, have you ever heard of Slaley Hall? Slavery like Hall. Slaley <laughs> Hall. It's a beautiful, um, it's, I think it's set on about 100 acres. There's a nice big hotel driving range. And next to it, there's this place called All Out Adventures. And um, oh. we have uh, we actually got to trial it as a, um, you know, before, to, for the giveaway. Me and Don went and got some pictures and videos and whatever. But we went for the, um, the quad bike. And have you ever done much on a quad bike? Like when I was a kid, I rolled Mate, loads of them. It is. Uh, Ed, can you remember, do you know who Graham Gowland is? Have you heard of him? He used to race in BSB. A bit, maybe a bit no. before your time. His dad actually um, set, in these, set these, set um, these. they had a Paul Gowland sticker on, but uh, basically you just go flat out and there's an up, up and down shift on the bar, five gears, right? And there's like wood trails, motocross tracks, the lot, uh, four by four things. And we went out and it was literally just like, right, follow me. And it was just flat now, out. Like you could you could not get your finger off the th- the thumb off the thing. Otherwise you'd drop away. Now, Blake, who works there, he's a, he's a racer himself. So it was just like rabbit in the headlights. So any age, any age group can go to it. And it, the thing about that is, or I'm going to be honest, I've not like living in the local area. 
I looked at it and went, that looks like a bit of a gimmick. Yeah, again, you think you're going to turn up, you're just going to get your hand held, you're not really going to do it. It's going to have like a restrictor. Yeah, it is. That, that, honestly, that. all that. I tell you what, I have never been more surprised in my life. Thing is, it's the distance you cover. I mean, you're going from one side of Northumberland to the other. It's not like you're just going around a crappy car it's park bro- or a bit of wood in no, it. I just want to. I just want to say the. It's, um, got, it's got a Land Rover on it. Yeah, no, the, no, 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 like you can go out in the Land, Land Rover, Rover uh, Bentley test there, like all the off-road vehicles test there. So, um, as well as the yeah, as well as what we've just mentioned, there's all there's loads of things that you can do. Paintballing, clay pigeon. It is. I tell you what, right? If you ever come north, whatever. If Carlsberg did an advert, uh, yeah. Budweiser, <laughs> Budweiser, <laughs> Budweiser. No, Guinness, Guinness. Guinness. There you go. <laughs> That's it. No, but like honestly, if you're coming up with like Jeff Cross living all the way in Paul Redker, um, oh, yeah, if you're coming up, no, co- they do corporate days. They do like absolutely everything. No, like stag do's and things like that. Yeah. That's what they do. Anyway, Find a girl, get her married, get a stag do up here. Simple as that. Storm. There you go. So. Um, for our listeners, they they're doing a family day out on the quad. So it's four people, and I'm I'm just looking here. The it's family fun. quad trek is sixty pound per person. So that's for what a we've full got. Day. That's what we've got to give away. And for that, um, I'll put some I'll put some pictures on. Uh, our social media channel and uh, it'll be on Facebook inter- Instagram and Twitter and we'll do some sort of like and share competition so when this podcast's out I'll also put a, a picture out and uh, to enter that obviously if you don't live anywhere some somewhere close to the northeast it probably isn't like you're not going to travel from t- Texas to come over and do it so don't bother imagine Colin really. Edwards going <laughs> I, well, I was thinking about it but Chrissy said uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know <laughs> Yeah, so um, if you if you live if you are interested in it, please maybe like go over the social media. But and uh, if you're interested in maybe do, doing something for a stag do, or I think they do lots of like team building exercises. Well, I think, and I think stuff. Valentino Rossi's just got with that new bird, and he? he might want to come over and do it. I, I think he's had a girlfriend for a while, hasn't he? Yeah. Misses, she is just gorgeous. Well, he might as get well. married. He might want to come and do it. Yes, yeah, stag do Rossi and Slately. Mm. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> are you lost? <laughs> That, uh, when Me now Be- find my way. <laughs> it sounds like poor lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Smash. Oh, no, we're, we're doing so well. <laughs> I tell, I tell you what. When we're over there, we're speaking. Um, is, is it? Oh, you're gonna Scott Murray. Scott, who, yes. run, who runs the place? I probably he's got that wrong. <laughs> no, no, it's Scott. In uh, he used to race quad bikes in the British Championships and motocross and all kinds. And he was shown us. Uh, it, He's, he's got an app on his phone for a uh, it, was it a Yamaha? Yamaha. It was yeah. one of the manufacturers, and you can you can map your bike. From yeah, yeah, your Yamaha phone. tuning, yeah. And you can you can build like a three D map and all, all kinds from an app on your phone. It was like Mate, mental. My boss has got a WR Yamaha for enduro, and I hear about this every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put another map on the uh, on the WR. It's like, well, why don't you just ride it? <laughs> Mate, we've got three tonne of gravel to shift. Can you just shut up about your bloody Yamaha? <laughs> just, let's just crack on here, son. <laughs> now, also, uh, we've only got one question, actually, from our good friend Ryan Garside on uh, Patreon. He's so, like, I posted the fact you're coming on so they can ask questions. He's a dirty oh. little race and cheat. And uh, he's, he's, he's actually went... F- he, Who is he? He asked about... He's a good lad. <laughs> he, he asked about the Lord Stacey, which we've already covered. Uh, who's your money on for the BSB title this season? Me. me, good. I knew it was good. good. <laughs> no, good lad. Self belief. No, You're no, good on that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna win it. But like, um... can we have a bit of the prize money if you do? Yeah, yeah. Good man, thank you. We've got it here on Chase the Race. Isn't there's it? prize money in Super well, Shut up, man. No, yeah, there's no there's prize money. There's no entry fees. No unless, unless Bennett's put something together. Mm, there you go. Like um, Tommy Bridewell, he got like seventy grand or something if he won three rounds in a row or something. Really tasty, or something like that, yeah. tasty. Just do yeah. that then. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Do, so do, um, I don't know. It'd probably be Josh again, wouldn't it? He's really pretty is. comfortable, isn't he? and he's gonna. He should be faster than last year because he'll have better setup and he'll have all testing again and he'll just have more setup again, won't he? Trent, the Honda's got a chance with Glenn. Well, he was close last year, so he was no really close. He, he was leading for a bit. Is there, yeah. is there anybody yeah. that you think like an outside bet who maybe most people wouldn't think, but like they've maybe changed teams and you think they they'll be on it this year? What do you think Andrew's going to do on the Tyco bike? You know, going from the Honda. Answer mine first. <laughs> Shit, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't know. I'm. I, I don't. To be honest, this with you, I don't really hour, know. Yeah. I'm just. I'm focusing on my own good. championship. Good, good, good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not bothered what they're going to do. There we are. Good yeah. answer. Good, Good answer, answer, son. They can do what they want to do. <laughs> and the last one, we haven't actually talked anything about MotoGP. And uh, Ryan and said... I, I never actually answered the Lord Stacey question. I, like, talked about it. Yeah, go on. Go on. Then, yeah, sorry, yeah. 
When I first started racing, I went to Landau. I told you about that, and I did the Mini Motos. Yeah. Well, when I did it, I came out of nowhere. So my nickname was the Predator. Some old guy said, bloody hell, he's come out of nowhere. I've seen that he's on the like, letters. He's like the Predator, because mm-hmm. the Predator comes out of nowhere. Then you got to 16, and you start, and then you thought, that might not go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a few uh, connotations. <laughs> it's like maybe being called uh, Storm Savage. Storm Savage. Oh my god, I went. I'm a savage. <laughs> but yet yeah. again, we were doing so uh, well. No, honestly, honestly, <laughs> that's that why? why I changed, yeah. Because yeah. in this day and age, you the nickname, like the Predator, you just, just doesn't look good nowadays, you know yeah. what I mean? Was that, so, did, did you come to that realization yeah. yourself, or did yeah. someone have a word with no, you? No, I come yeah. to that realization. Because yeah. I dare say someone wouldn't say anything, because anyone with the right mind shouldn't think. That it's like that anyway, but you've just got to think. Oh, it's the you? way just, of the world yeah, now, man. Full of wet how wipes. How yeah, offended everyone gets and stuff yeah, like exactly. that. So when my dad raced, yeah, he was on it. Like he was on it. He was known as Lord Stacy, right? Because he was the Lord in a car, like he was the man. Yeah. And he actually had the deeds to that name. Like Fantastic. he owned the deeds to that name. So I don't know what the crack is with the deeds now, but I dare say there's somewhere in my name. So yeah. Lord Stacy is my name. I like it. I thought you must have because I think you can buy land like in Scotland and become. A, you don't have to buy yeah. that much and because I know people. Shut up, have, man! How much is this? <laughs> oh, you can, I know people that have done it. You, Just go and stand on your land. I'm going to buy a rock. Can you, I afford a rock? Like, like <laughs> you do, there's a way. If That'll you, be expensive with the rates these days. That's my. That's mine, pet. If you Google it, <laughs> take I, it out with you. If you Google it, I think I'm pretty sure you can buy. <laughs> this is my rock. And you can also, do you know, you can change your name by depot, and it's like I think it's 30, 35 quid or maybe three hundred and fifty quid. But you can change your name to anything that you want. Well, no, some someone I know did it for a day. And, um, my, it, my my sister Lola, she's not actually Stacy. She changed her middle name to Stacy. Oh, right. Yeah. Because my mum and dad never got married. Right. Okay. So right. Besides me and my stepsister Lex, we're the only Stacys. Right. There we are then. <laughs> I think. Oh my I think. god. I really. don't know. I don't know. I don't have a lot to do with most of my family. So yeah. Oh um, my. But yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Sorry, no, I'm just going through. I'm, I'm going to buy a bit of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine, I no, 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 I like could imagine that, him that, going that. into a pub or a club and he's got a rock and he goes up to a bird and he goes, here's my rock, but you this could is... be my rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I don't think the Lord Do- the Lord Dominic would go very well. No, this, no, no, no. Lord uh, no, I don't. I, I don't. I don't have that. 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 I don't. I, I don't know. I just don't. I haven't got that air about us. But no, honestly. But like, I know. I was like, your look in the paddock is brilliant. I look like you know the top of the suit. And the thing I mean, is, you yeah, generally, you know, you generally suit it. I'm not just is saying that, that, is that though. That you get a thing from your dad. Yeah. Uh, I have got the original top hat. Cool story. Really cool story. Again, another story. My dad passed away. I thought his top hat had been stolen. He said to me one day, he said, I think someone's nicked my top hat because I don't know where it's gone. Yeah. All right, sound. Top hat's gone. Well, wherever it's gone. He didn't get... I think he got another one, and I'm not sure what he did with that, I think. I think that went in his coffin with him when he passed away. Yeah. And, like, because he got cremated and that, and I've got his ashes at home. and, um, And, yeah, the other top hat, where did it go? Who's got it? So... I've got this Mustang car. I showed Chrissy. I don't know if you've seen it. I've got a yellow Mustang, nineteen sixty-five. It was my dad's. Fantastic. So I like keep that. That's that's his car. Yeah. It was in a container for years. Like just kept in storage. Like kept out of the way. I went up there about two years. It had been in there. So like halfway through four years of it being there. Um, and I like sat in it. I was like, oh, love this car. Like amazing. Can't wait till I'm like old enough to drive and like get it out, enjoy it. Um. Put the cover back on it. Another two years, left it. It's at my house now. It's clean, everything. I went up there, got it running, and I've looked in the car, and behind the driver's seat, there's a That's top hat bad. sat there. Mint. Now, mint. The person my dad being, I think he pers pers like P- purposefully purposefully put the top hat there mint. for me to find it. That's mint, mate. That is mint. I might be just being stupid. No, no, that's but... no. But it's it's nice that these things have meaning because you know, it, like I say, at first you you generally suit the look. Uh, you're like that, that is mint. It stands out. That is it's your character through and through. And but then the top I wear now, 
Teesside race they did the year after my dad passed away. I remember that. The race, trophy yeah. was a top hat. Yeah. Because of my dad. So if I hadn't have won the race, I wouldn't have got the top hat. But I won the race and I've got the top hat and I've got the trophy and everything. Mint. So that top hat's mine. So they that, are the, is, that is my own top hat. They are. The top hat has a story. Mint. Very good yeah. question. There we go. And uh, just to finish off, uh, MotoGP, MotoGP testing's been on at the moment and I think it all kicks off. And is it next week? I think the a week, f- isn't it? Yeah, 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 next, week, yeah. next week. Have you been following any of the testing? Mm, yeah, yeah, no. Nothing? Um, <laughs> Cutting trees, young man. <laughs> do you think, Mark, do you think Mark, by the time this podcast goes out, it'll be ob- the answer to this will be obvious, but at the time of recording, we don't know. Uh, do you think Marquez will be out? He's been out riding, though. He's been out. I, I I've said seen to you unfit. before, I, I think he's going to win this year. Do you? I'm going to say I do. Are you a betting man? Is. Am I a betting man? A betting man? Like a bit of gamble? I'm going to put money on him because I don't really know him, but... No, no, like between you and Dom. Between me, no, like, between you put, and me. Like, would you put a five Marquez, on it? Would you put, shake my hand at five pounds, you think Marquez is going to yeah. win it. Good man, good man, there five, you go. Five quid he's going to win it this year. Yeah, straight off hey, the bat. Just, like, handshake, we've got uh, the old, <laughs> the old Stauff. Uh, oh, for God's sake. So, <laughs> St- Stauff, straight off there, there we go. So, sponsor the team. <laughs> Sorry, we got cut off. I know, I know, techni- we haven't had a technical in a while. So anyway, we were using the Stauff hand sanitizer there. Big so there thank you go. to Stauff for that and all the support they have given us over the years. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. And this hand sanitizer is unreal. New <laughs> corporate <laughs> sellout. I love it. This guy's got a future <laughs> full on corporate sellout. There so you go. M- most people probably don't know the, how the, you know, when they see GR Motorsport, because it's very like one bike's in one colours, one's in another, and it's separated yeah. between like the suit bikes, all Euro car parts and stocks, all stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's hand sanitizer. So, <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> Did he really just do that? Ooh. A lot of alcohol in it. Isn't that 100% alcohol? 80%? 80%? Oh, God. Tastes like that. What does it taste like? Hand sanitizer. Ooh. <laughs> I've never tasted it. I don't really want to know. Go on, do but, it. Um, I'll do it. You do it. No, <laughs> Have we got... Um, Dare you. <laughs> what, I've done it? <laughs> any, anything else to, to wrap things up? Have you got um, uh, any... I just obviously like to plug um, that we're always, we're always looking for sponsorship. I love how you look at the camera. We're <laughs> glazed <laughs> over. This is it. Get the get the hair swishing. Get the fans on, Chrissy. Get the fans on. There you are. We're always we're always looking for sponsorship. I've got plenty of opportunities on my helmet this year. Uh, I've already had people messaging me and stuff, and we're always trying to fit people on the helmet because every bit of help is appreciated, whether it's a lot of money and whether it's not a lot of money. Um, every little helps, and you will be helping someone get far in their career hopefully there you are. well said spot well on said. and uh, also do you do you sell merchandise or anything do you need to plug in i'm sorting that um i've just had some logos made stop looking in the camera you're spooking me out here <laughs> right, you've, done, know, most, you've done your plug you've done to, your plug this is like audible know, most people listen to this podcast well some people <laughs> do watch on youtube but most people do listen to it so, <laughs> so i've got okay <laughs> yeah, right. Let's go. Um, let's yeah, go. <laughs> I've just had some logos made and stuff because I, I had a load done, but they weren't on a PDF file. So you know, like picture, the quality's yeah. not very good for like merchandise and stuff. But I'm yeah, I That's am getting the much way. done. And also that'll be on uh, the brand warehouse. It's called and uh, social media plugs. Plug away. Uh, Storm Stacy seventy nine on Instagram and Storm Stacy Storm Lord Stacy on. Uh, Facebook and Twitter. I don't really use it. And if we're going to persuade your sister to help you with some editing, you might be on YouTube soon as well. Well, I've been trying to do my own editing, but when I get good at it, I'll probably be you need, you need to, we pay my little sister to do these so you need to you need maybe to I need to speak to your sister <laughs> there you so I, I no you funny what, business mate <laughs> sisters are off like speaking of sisters though I've actually before before I thank everyone all our patrons calls the cameras I've actually got to thank your sister Right, uh, she gave me a haircut, and this is the funniest thing about this story, right? So oh, anyway, my mum gave me a haircut, I got the mullet. Oh, I haven't, like, me, mate, me, me, like, hold on, let me just take my hat off. My hair was absolutely long as hell. So anyway, we, we had food at Chrissy's, and uh, your sister came in, and she gave us a haircut. She's a hairdresser by trade, but not a barber, big difference, big hoo-ha and that. So anyway, she's like, oh, she found, oh, I found these, the shaver. I'm like, all right, spot on, like, you know, these pair of clippers. So anyway, she's got the scissors on the go and Chrissy comes in and he's smiling. I'm going, what the hell are you smiling at? He goes, mate, those clippers, 
Let me ball trimmers. So anyway, <laughs> Chrissy's balls trimmers is just rubbing up the back of my neck. So it was a. Uh... My mates don't know, but we cut all their hair the other day with my ball trimmer. <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> They're not going to listen. to I this. was going to ask. Um, what's this? All the kids at school have got your haircut. What's? Wait, is, is there a celebrity that? <laughs> is there a celebrity um, that's like, is it? it is it. because of. Uh, some rappers called Bad Boy Chiller Crew that are up this is that way. What it is? Do you know Bad Boy Chiller Crew? Never heard of them. Yeah. But I seen you. Uh, I seen you the other day at the Loughborough, and then I've seen all the kids at school. Now I'm thinking it's such a unique hairstyle. I, I had one the, not long ago, and it had, like it was quite long. Like well, not quite long, but it was like a decent size. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to grow it out, get it dead like like long, like all right. Oh, like God. the birds hate it. They don't like it at all. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know why it looks mint. Um, <laughs> Oh, and yeah, I was going it out, and then I had a meeting with someone in Manchester, like a proper important meeting with a sponsor. And I was like, yeah, I "Stick a hat on." I need to... No, I shaved it. I'd done it all properly. Got a, my barber mate to give me a trim, and that like <laughs> little dodgy trim, <laughs> dodgy trim on the side. Hello, <laughs> we'll have to give me a chase. There isn't that, Hydra. I had that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> what, what's, Shots the, fired. what's the rapper called? Bad Boy Chiller Crew. They're called BBCC. Never heard of them. They're they're up this way. Right. Is that like new monkey thing. type of thing? They're just the, the the music's not actually that good, but it's just <laughs> it's just, it's just funny, I like their hair. funny music. <laughs> they must have a big. Uh, they like got a, a massive big, following. Yeah, I was gonna say they must massive. have a big social impact because yeah. like all the kids are uh, have got that hair good. I wonder if they, like if they like motorcycles. I just, just get them on the show. I just, <laughs> I just think that they do like motorbikes. Happy days, get them yeah. on the show. <laughs> if you message them on Instagram, I reckon they would call. Shut them. up, man. No, we'll give it a go. Hey, God loves a try it. But there we go. I'll tell you what, seriously, we have been rambling on. This is what happens when a bunch of razors get together. We, we just said, chat and we chat said and chat. this podcast was going to take You're staring in the camera again. Stop it. It's audible, mate. <laughs> audible. Right? Podcast listeners. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, thanks so much for making the effort to come up here because no, I know no. it goes a long way. And, uh, and before the season starts, obviously, best of luck. Yeah. I'll be seeing plenty of you, but best of yeah. luck no, all likewise. year. And uh, looking forward to a good year's and racing. likewise to you, Mr. Dominic. Well, thank you very much. But honestly, it'd be absolutely mint, guys. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's, I, think, I think it's been a long overdue, on it? Yeah. Oh, God, I know. It's it's good, and we'll have you back on again, without a doubt. So, and, uh, As usual, massive thank you to our patrons and to our sponsor, Colchester Kawasaki. Yeah. And, uh, we'll... Look down the lens and say thank you, Colchester <laughs> Kawasaki. Go on. Catch up. So... They don't sponsor me. Oh, no, do it anyway. Do it for us. Do it for us. Big thank you to Kawasaki UK. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, mic and drop. LKQ, mic drop. <laughs> LKQ Euro Car Parts, Stauff UK, Belgrave Motors. <laughs> nice shout. RST. <laughs> nice shout. And all the other sponsors that are helping me this year at BSB. Thank there you. There we go, but You've nope. got that well rattled off, I like There it. we go. Spot but um, Only because it took me enough attempts with that press release I did. <laughs> Oh, Honestly, yeah, yeah. I had it written on a whiteboard. I can't, I don't know if you Yeah, can... right. We are going to have to stop this interview, right? But we are going to have to catch up the crack next time. <laughs> <laughs> have to be I've a hooked him now. Uh, yeah. be a, definitely a part two. Definitely a part two. Well, well safe, safe journey home for both of you, and uh, we'll catch up sometime soon. Take care. See you in a bit. <laughs> Click, buy, deliver with remote purchasing from the two time motorcycle news dealer of the year. Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.